good afternoon everybody uh, greetings and welcome to uh, the another Wusabat out formation class uh, UK from all eyes in Egypt Midlands uh, and the north um, from United Sabians uh, worldwide um, as I say we're doing a class today or finishing off I should say actual fact series um, number 48 uh, Kabir Kadam uh, translated as Bigfoot and then we'll be progressing into Pa Balag M. Yananan, uh, the message of Yanun, uh, and some topics uh, arising out of that uh, particular scroll. Um, so, welcome all. I'm just going to run through uh, some introductory things just to make sure that you can hear us okay in terms of the uh, the experience. So, the first poll that I'm going to do for those on the Zoom platform. Uh, and welcome us to those joining us on Facebook. If you can just uh, respond uh, by, can you hear my voice clearly over the uh, Om chant in the background? So, as I say, some of you may be on different devices. Uh, so, uh, if you can vote to confirm that you can hear me okay over the Om chant, if you cannot hear me okay, then you need to put a message in the chat, just give us some feedback. So can you hear me okay? On certain devices, you might need to swipe uh, left or right in order to pull up the poll. Give me a minute to do that. Okay, I'm going to end uh, that poll now. So thank you for your feedback on that. Seems everybody can hear us okay. And the second part I'm just going to run is just to make sure that you can see the visuals okay. So can you see the presentation clearly on screen? So if I move that back and forth, can you see that clearly? Again, I'm going to swipe left or right on your device, depending on your device, if you cannot see the screen. Okay, give about 10 more seconds to respond to that poll. Okay, excellent. Seems there's no issues uh, on that side of things. Okay. Uh, so moving forward, then um, what we're going to do is start the class uh, with a positive, uh, um, positive affirmation uh, called Partak Yud, um, a form of positive thinking uh, to help us align ourselves with um, our ancestors and uh, also as well as our Ifric ancestors and um, start the say, class in a positive, agreeable, uh, mental fashion. So I'll do it in uh, the Sabaic language first and then I will translate uh, into English for full and proper understanding. Abdai kaleh namazurat wufakur ame kasam un empa paut anuki jawef pa ashuk empa paut Wukale ashuk kawun jawef naya Anuki kasam un empa paut Wupa paut kawun kasam un em naya Anuki wahu ame pa paut Wupa paut kawun wahu ame naya Nakuk kadur nacho ame kasam un empa paut Wuhabub ame mushahas un Nakuk kadur kawan kale pafef nakuk tayur jawef pa pa ut ame wase ame tayarni kawun la ke bakoe jawef pa pa ut anuki abed bi na fashni pa pa ut kawun anuki pa pa ut kadur nakuk kadur 
papa haut amour na kok amour so we started off um, by saying begin all present thinking um, as a part of the all and we said i am in the divine love of the all expanding and all divine love is in me i am a part of the all expanding and the all expanding is a part of me i am one as the all expanding and the all expanding is one as me i can succeed as a part of the all expanding and fail as an individual per person i can be all that i want in the all expanding as long as my want is to stay in the all expanding i am never by myself the all expanding is i am the all expanding can i can the all expanding does i do so that was a positive affirmation by name of partak yud in uh, the uh, sabian uh, culture and in the uh, sabaic or misbatia um, lahaj or Sab uh, sabian language uh, for say full of proper understanding uh, and tonation and something i say that was gifted back to us by our ancestors in this day and time to help us to uh, reconnect uh, holistically with them both ethically uh, clearly and then through our own uh, ancestors within our blood physically as well so if you join us on the zoom platform uh, for the first time i need a reminder you have a panel um, here and to the left is your audio settings so for any reason you need to adjust or um, change device or anything of that nature then those are the that would be the option that you would select and choose um, if you've got any feedback so non-question related feedback then um put that in the chat please select uh, panelists and all participants and put your feedback in there um i think people sometimes put questions in the chat the questions are for the question section which i'm going to explain in a second um so the feedback could be sound could be um positive negative feedback or whatever that you need to provide to us there's not a question that you want asked um, then as I say put that in the uh, chat or if it's a question that's related it's not a question related to the class it might be I don't know how do I join or something of that nature um, then that may be more appropriate for the chat rather than the question um, directly to myself but if you do want to ask a question directly to myself in relation to the class then there are two ways in which to do that so uh, the first is by raising your hand um, and as I say you can ask a question uh, for myself, the student teacher for today, uh, Nabab Kakni Hess. I should probably introduce myself in the beginning, uh, Nabab Kakni Hess. And so, um, yes, uh, what, what will happen is periodically I will go to the facilitators who, um, as I say, will, once your hand is raised, they'll give you permission in the system uh, to unmute yourself. Um, and then you simply respond to that message and then you're able to speak and ask your question directly to me and we can interact on that basis. If you've dialed in, then the two options to raise your hand, it's star nine. And then to unmute and mute your phone, it's going to be star six. Again, once we give you permission to uh, unmute your phone, you can do that at will. So we just ask that you keep your phone muted um, until, as I say, such time as you need to ask a, a question or raise your hand um, in order not to disturb the, the meeting. So please make sure your phone stays muted once you've asked your, your question. If you want to ask another question, just simply raise your hand again. The other way, if you're not necessarily confident or don't wish to uh, come on uh, verbally, then you can ask a written question in the question and answer section. Um, and so, and periodically we'll go to the facilitators and they will ask uh, uh, the question on your behalf, uh, placing it in this area. So it just helps us to keep a track of um, where the questions are versus, uh, so say, things being put in the, the chat. Yeah, it's, it's just like different reporting set up. So it just helps us to, to monitor a little bit better um, in that regard. Uh, so yeah, if you've got a written question, then as by all means put that in the chat. If, as I say, it's not answered correctly or fully, or you've got some feedback or whatever, then you can come back again on that same uh, place and ask questions on the um, 
on the subject that we're dealing with uh, today. Um, generally speaking, it's questions on the topic. That's just to keep a level of uh, focus um, and so that people go away at least learning uh, something uh, specific or to the point of them being able to master that particular subject. But obviously, if it's worth it, um, uh, for us to go to the left or slightly to the right then we will do so if not we refer you to a source when you can get that information uh, if we know the answer okay um, so we periodically run polls during the uh, these sessions uh, and that's just um, anonymous um, but it's just to check people's uh, understanding because obviously some of these uh, classes particularly in this one have run in sequence so they've been in a number of different parts so just to make sure um, that there's some understanding there carried through it's multiple choice and fairly straightforward um, as I say if you haven't experienced in the classes before or this is your first time then uh, use your best guess and then we'll obviously explain the answers uh, once that poll is finished and we do have one uh, today uh, so uh, be prepared uh, for that so just try it um, if you're on Facebook um, you won't necessarily be able to see the poll questions so I will probably seek to post them in the chat on Facebook you can answer um, in the comments um, or in the chat facility on Facebook if you want the full interactive experience um, they need to join us on the Zoom platform uh, and the link should be in the chat um, on, on Facebook uh, to join by Zoom if you want to be involved in the, the poll questions. We can't display, for some reason it doesn't display uh, all the questions on the screen um, in that regard. Okay, so uh, a very quick introduction, uh, but nonetheless very important introduction and there is a, a level of focus on who the master teacher is today, uh, being it's, it's called the, the message of uh, Yanun. So um, who are we talking about when we say master teacher? Well, we're talking about a master at teaching, not just um, because uh, the person's expert or skilled in a certain subject. The term master teacher was coined um, within our culture as um, Sabians, and it basically relates to the fact of this individual is a master, or at least claimed to be a master of teaching, in the sense of the art of, or science of teaching. Stood. and so uh, has been doing so officially from 1963 um, and his name is Dr. Malachi Z. Kabina York Okran born in Takaradi, Ghana, West Africa um, uh, to Mary Abba Okran York, a sacred feminine um, also known as Um Fatima Miriam there were a number of different celebrations uh, around the world um, between this and our last um class with you because her birth date was March 10th uh, and so that was to celebrate obviously one of our uh, important ancestors uh, being the sacred feminine who gave birth to our master teacher or Parman Thar, the Warner. Um, some also may say saviour but we, we can get into that term a bit later it means different things to different people um, but importantly as I say as we step through this class you'll find out um, for planetary nations or races to each of them is sent their own warner uh, uh, to help them as I say with their own ascension pathway and as I say the, the deity or the uh, so-called goddesses of the planet Earth are the sacred feminine or the females because obviously to establish a physical existence on this planet despite what their uh, so-called Bible says uh, you need to come through the, the womb of a woman that's nature's um, reality um, despite um, others maybe trying to claim or diminish that role nothing against uh, the trans community so on and so forth but I think to diminish women by calling them cyst women um, or cyst female or whatever term they, they want to use is a diminishment of the reality of us as a human race so you have to understand that just because um, somebody's equality journey can't, cannot impact upon another person's or another or the truth of the race and who we are factually so the fact of the matter is that all human beings irrespective of um gender have to bow down to the female or the sacred feminine or the woman because we wouldn't be here say, if, if it wasn't for that reality and certainly when it comes to teachers particularly uh, when we think about the uh, those who've been sent 
uh, to the Nagarnadu or the Negroid race in particular, um, we often talk about the male leaders, but not necessarily who their mothers were. Uh, and that's said they uh, also fathers, but then particularly who their mothers were, because obviously within that womb, that being our individual is being shaped um, by way of the mother's imagination. So you have the two words there, image and nation as a composite for imagination. So how the woman thinks, her mind, etc., it's gonna to help to shape the, the individual being born. So a very significant individual, Mary Abba Akran York, and who transitioned on the 4th of August, uh, 2012, and we celebrate her existence as now uh, one of our ancestors, uh, having transitioned, as I say, to the uh, other side, so to speak, uh, passed on, um, and say, yeah, this is her in the uh, royal uh, dress of the clan, mother of the tribe, <coughs> excuse me, as the mother of Dr. Malachi Z, uh, Kabina York uh, Okran. Now, let's move that forward. So the next um, person is Sacred Masculine, um, which is Al-Hadi Abdul Rahman Al-Mahdi, um, who was born, as I say, in 1922, uh, tragically uh, was uh, assassinated yeah, and crossed over in 1970, uh, and is the father of uh, Dr. Malachi Z. Uh, Kabina York Okran, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and is part of the, the royal family um, out of uh, Sudan uh, from the uh, Dongola tribe uh, also, also known as the uh, Fuzzy Wazis and is the uh, grandson of uh, Mustafa Muhammad Al-Mahdi, mm -hmm. Ahmed Al-Mahdi of the Sudan. Um, uh, so a very important and powerful family in that region um, linked, as I say, particularly in the Mahdi's case, linked um, to our ancient Egyptian uh, ancestors uh, who helped in the same fashion and form uh, of many of our great pharaohs uh, to drive uh, the Europeans back across the burning sands uh, into uh, Europe uh, when they had obviously invaded um, what is known as the motherland or some may say fatherland of uh, Afaf Araye Ka'au or Africa as it's known by some uh, today. And uh, this is uh, the master teacher at the age of 25 uh, under the uh, name of the physical body, uh, Isa al-Hahdi al-Mahdi. Uh, 25 was his initiation, uh, where he speaks about being housed by an uh, Ifrik uh, being or entity um, known as the providers or Murzaku, yeah, Riskians, who the ancient Egyptians referred to as uh, Natharu, or where they get the English word nature from. Natharu, the word Natharu means overseers, yeah, it's a position or title. Um, and as I say, he says he was in house, to so say the proof one may say is in um, the pudding or the uh, you have to look at uh, the fruit that the tree bears. Um, and in this case, you're looking at um, over a thousand books um, written since 1963. We're not talking about small, uh, well, some are small pamphlets, but some of the you know, larger titles are over a thousand pages. You know, think about the degrees, which will be back out soon, degree of Mohammedism, degree of Christism, uh, and degree of Mosesism. Uh, these books are over a thousand pages uh, containing all that one would um, want to know about those monotheistic religions. So the work rate uh, has been uh, significant um, and this is evidence uh, as they would state, i.e. Parnathar, our Ifrit ancestors would state, of evidence of their presence in terms of the influence of on this individual, um, both physically and obviously esoterically insofar as being able to provide the information necessary to us to aid us with our ascension journey. So in the first part of the work that was to be done, um, he was in house by a being by the name of El Khadir uh, from 19, uh, various different points from 1945, um, uh, 63 and then implanted fully in 1970 um, all the way up until the uh, release of a book called the holy tablets which was the bridge between religion
definition and reality um, and therefore preparing us I suppose because initially this doctrine called Musabat, the spiritual science of the Nagarnadu or Negroid uh, was too heavy for the people at that time, they wanted to worship, they wanted um, religion, they were not really I suppose to stand on their own two feet and be self-sufficient in that regard whereas the monotheistic religions unfortunately the psychology of them makes the, us subservient to another people who are not in that image and after our, our likeness which is anti or against natural nature or the order of things by way of our natural design and so in order to correct that or fix that a medicine was needed the antidote so to speak um, and so therefore they formulated um, uh, this being by the name of an Amun Nabab Rayaqsa as we uh, know it in ancient Tamriya, ancient Egypt the ancient Egyptians were also referred to this being as Fahutwi in the sand, which is a vehicle or a vessel that allows our ancestors ancestors to speak through in order to convey a certain uh, level of information that supports or sets the record straight or corrects and informs um, those of their descendants or children um, about their not only their ascension pathway but then how to navigate that accordingly to fulfill their potential and achieve perfection um, within this as I say current uh, physical realm on up and beyond it um, as part of as I say that pathway so El Khadir, the green one as he was known as uh, to many different uh, schools uh, around the world the Islamic school etc the green one um, as I say was the Ifrit entity that it housed in order to produce the necessary information or cure or medicine uh, by way of the master teacher and to deal with the uh, religious indoctrination as I say a misinformation as I say that been uh, certainly conveyed or emphasized for the last 6,000 or some odd years. So after uh, the release of the Holy Tablets uh, came the sacred records of Atum Rei, uh, also known as the Black Book, and you had the release of the sacred records of Tamarei, also known as the Gold Book. So the sacred records of Atum Rei, or the Black Book, is now where we start to step into the reality um, of who and what we are. So we're now moving into our story, our doctrine and clearly that book um, is you know, heavily heavy, sci heavily scientific uh, and you know, deals with a lot of um, quantum uh, mechanics and things of that nature because you're now starting to get into the reality you're now starting to step into the into the darkness you understand which is not spoken about a lot in this society the emphasis is always on the light but obviously that that's not the reality of even our own existence all human beings uh, because we exist in a universe of or universes or uh, on into dual tri multi omni for everything is this predominantly um, darkness and so 90 percent of all existence um, is darkness only 10 percent um, is the visible uh, universe that we see out there, all the planets, sun, so on and so forth, the things that we can see with our physical eyes makes up 10%. So to really understand or into an over and therefore into an inner standing of what is taking place, we need to understand, uh, have an understanding of what we cannot see, you understand, because that's what makes up uh, most of existence as we know it. So the new combination or the name of the physical vessel um, was, um, as we know it today, His Excellency Dr. Malachi Kabin, Zed Kabina York Okran, and then housed um, by the being by the name of Pa Nabab uh, Yanun, um, or the Master Yanun, uh, classified as one of the 19th elders in, within that system, um, and the 19th elder um, at the end of the 24,000 year cycle, um, and comes down and occupies the 25th seat which is on earth so we understand that in order um, for our ancestors as I say who are um, much older um, than us and obviously uh, we are their children so to speak there can always be a disconnect to say between their mindset versus who we have become I suppose in terms of the environment that we're in so in order to 
de design or develop a doctrine which is appropriate for the mindset um, of the ge their genes which have tumbled forward within this environment then they birth themselves amongst us um, in order to in order to prepare as I say for the necessary information to aid as I say that ascension journey and fix let's be honest um, a lot of the ills which have happened to us over the last in particular 6,000 years having been the subject as I say of um, other races, particularly the Kukasnadu or Caucasoids, um, who seemingly have made their mission um, to seek to wipe us from existence um, and not want to see us progress it. Uh, provided um, a hindering force um, to that ascension pathway that our ancestors have obviously laid out for us in order to fulfill our potential. So, um, and as part of that journey um, in becoming uh, the master teacher, he is a teacher, not a holy person. Um, we know due to this dispel that we have uh, suffered from for many years, like a mental disease or illness. Um, and one of the characteristics of that is not being able to recognize leadership in our own skin color. Um, is that oftentimes we give people their, well, some slang, as they say, flowers or, or their props or whatever when they're dead. You understand, but obviously when a person's dead, you can't ask them no questions. So we need to make sure that we give people their their respect and, and reverence um, or deference, so to speak. That we need to pay um, to each other, but also uh, people in necessary leadership positions, as we would have done uh, in our own culture. And we see many cultures around the world um, where that is the case. But obviously, we needed uh, a new mindset that was. Uh, that came along with the shifting of the cycles uh, from 1970, the incoming of the sun cycle. Uh, a new mindset came in, which was obviously a result of the 400-year uh, um, kidnapping, in a sense, which was a seek and destroy mindset that came in. Understood, and so the Nathara were ready for this insofar as uh, producing this individual or being as a culmination of many of uh, great teachers um, that we had had along the way, but each one of them had a piece of the story, but not the full um, understanding. Many still stuck um, in the monotheistic teachings and saying to the point, as say, up to 1970, the opening of the seventh seal was referred to as the seventh major so-called scriptures um, and where that spell would now have to be broken because the various different interventions prior to that had not achieved fully the desired result. So therefore it was necessary now for the, the last one to come in order to, as I say, set the record straight and said don't make me holy so you can find holes in me so one of the things is is that um they like to have us um not necessarily put our leads on a pedestal but they judge them by unrealistic expectations so you're not seeing them or at least the physical aspect of the person um as a human being um, and any, if you find yourself in a leadership role, etc., and you make one, two mistakes, or don't do what um, the people expect you to do, or whatever, then they're going to tear you down. And there are certainly forces waiting to tear down any type of uh, black leadership um, because they want us to be their scapegoat um, for a lot of their ills, as opposed to being who we are and what we're supposed to be according to nature. So this symbolizes the income of a new mindset. So the level of rebelliousness was needed to be anti or to go against the system to some degree. And you saw that evidenced in language such as um, repurposing the word um, bad, to being called good, the turning of hat, the hat backwards and different types of behaviors um, that came in with the youth of um, born after 1970, um, which was to rebel against the system. That energy was to rebel, but not to rebel against all systems as you um, recognize going through, as I say, a certain type of uh, medical approach, one may describe it as to remove the kind of mental uh, bounds that have been placed by way of bad information. Um, and so it was necessary as part of the antidote to give part of the poison in setting the record straight of these various different degrees, but then opening back one's mind and walking them back to the source of it all, um, which is and where we were at our best and highest, um, which is uh, when we were living as a uh, 
and then uh, my two years ancient Egyptians on our own land in our own culture or in line as I say with our Ifri ancestors yeah there was no differential um, uh, between them and we had a full and proper understanding of who and what we were directing our uh, emotional energy towards so part of the um, issue in dealing with the spell um, of as I say uh, under various different names or guises was that the real deities um, of the Bible because we're looking at these as positions or titles uh, were nothing but extraterrestrial so I think we've done a, a fairly reasonable job of uh, explaining to you in parts one of this class the harvest uh, parts two blood lust and religion uh, also linked to the harvest and then part three Bigfoot um, of uh, exposing as I say the fact that these extraterrestrials and nothing as they but bloodlusting or certainly these groups uh, that we see on the screen here nothing but bloodlusting um, had put the bloodlust in religion uh, certainly programmed um, hate into the beings that they wanted to create in their image and after their likeness which is um, the red and ruddy race and also the white race um, of the Kakasu or Caucasoids you understand it always uh, one of the things I think when the incident happened with um, oh, well if I believe that, believe that so the um so we see that they were their god programmed hate within their genes and genetics um as you see in genesis uh chapter 3 uh, verse 15 enmity was placed between the woman's seed and the devil's seed so that story there is relating to the mokasu or the caucasoid race the Muadamu, yeah the adamites um and not doesn't relate to our creation which is obviously well beyond uh, 6,000 years ago, hence why they have the term pre-history. So if you wasn't able to, um, or just join us for the first time, I'd urge you to go back to those classes um, to get an understanding of what we're speaking about and where we are at um, today. You understand? So uncovering that mystery as they have it in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7, um, is peeling back the layers, yeah, kicking down the... Um, the wall that kept the, the Wizard of Oz uh, behind that particular barrier and seeing us say who and what they really are, and more importantly, what is their agenda and their purpose, understood. So, uh, let's uh, go forward. And get to where we want to be today, to some degree. Uh, we've done a deeper, um, a more detailed introduction. Um, in previous sessions so um, if you're not clear um, then by all means revisit those or ask a question in the chat so water bat is the spiritual science uh, of the second resurrection so you're re being resurrected for as from the, that mentally dead state overstood um, and I say many forces have tried to stop that affirmation the style of his affirmation coming to us in the form of information uh, in order to reach us and so many sacrifices have been made along the way in order to ensure as I say um, that we were able to break this spell yeah, and they call it a spell of sleep yeah, Raquel, Chalel, Nawum, or a spell of ignorance as it's also known as and it had different facets overstood um, throughout the ages uh, when various groups the Luciferians uh, also known as the Pleiadians mixed in <clears throat> mixed in and particularly the 204 angels that they speak about as I say in their sort of bible story um, also but in the book of uh, Enoch the first book uh, seventh chapter and also the book of Jubilees these are some of the lost books of their so-called uh, bible um, it speaks about a group particularly of 200 extraterrestrials who mixed in um, with the daughters of men or the Muadamu um, and taught them as I say certain uh, information which we would know today as the Wicca religion in the sand so part of this spell binding which um, one of the key ways in which it um, manifests itself particularly is in the language you understood yeah, so we're seeing but we're not really seeing what's going on we're hearing but we don't really hear the words you understand so um, 
the other word cat, for example, which is a C A T. Um, yeah, the C is a S sound, but we give it a K sound, uh, and then say, well, that's the proper way to say it. So they get you to accept wrong information, but call it proper or uh, right, but it's not right according to the phonetics of the language. So the first aspect of the spell, spell of a man, um, was the spell of amnesia. So we forgot who we were, forgot um, how to uh, ma work nature, make it rain, know which herbs were the healing herbs and which ones were the poisonous um, herbs. You know, a lot of knowledge that we have forgotten. And so built the pyramids, don't know how we did it, what their purpose was, so on and so forth. Um, so the first aspect, aspect excuse me, of that spell, which not just also casting, but also remember the mixing in of um, genes distorts the connection, isn't it? It brings in white noise, uh, the connection with our own ancestral forces. So um, unforceably, oftentimes that mixing has happened, isn't it? As you can see evidence in the last uh, 6,000 years. So that disruption, uh, the first aspect of the spell, spell excuse me, causes us to forget. The second aspect of the spell was um, the spell of Kingu and dealing with religion. Um, and that was where we started to worship um, what we would say that higher force in so many different titles, God, Allah, and different religions, so on and so forth, Yahweh, different names outside of self understood uh, that basically created what is called idol worship but not idol I-D-O-L but idol worship is an I-D-L-E putting that energy emotional energy into nothingness and so lack of focus not knowing what God is so on and so forth and what happens is is that other races in particular the Muadamu or the Kukasu the Caucasoid uh, race started to overlay the names of their deities over the stories and realities of our ancient ancestors who were considered to be as gods when they walked um, the earth and, and their influence but even in their instances were extraterrestrials yeah, from different star constellations to help guide uh, and teach us as human beings as their children understood but the reality is is that as I say they start to overlay certain names so emotionally there's some drawing or tying uh, because there's some um, misdirection and misinformation as I say within those stories so you may find yourself emotionally joined because um, when they say for example in, in the Jesus story um, that uh, Peter denied Jesus three times for example yes the term Peter is P-E-T-E-R isn't it it's the same as a term Pata as in P-T-A-H Pata or in proper tones uh, Pata in the sense P-T-A-H A-H in the sense so the, the, the tones is where as I say uh, the spell was uh, so cast in that way because as I say it's trick knowledge it's getting you to direct your emotional energy um, to empower um, other races other than self in the sense so we've been directing our emotional energy to help um the Mukasu or the Caucasian understood uh, and this is to say part of the, the, the Wicca teachings or spell uh, that was used against they don't have any real power the power is coming from uh, the source which is us yeah? as, as in the solar system the source of its power is the sun isn't it correct and so we represent um, the terrestrial representation of the sun here on earth um, but our society uh, under the spell of religion, we have been subservient to other races. That's what religion does, um, as bloodlust and religion goes into. It makes you subservient. Yeah, so if you look at all of the iconography within those various different degrees, we find ourselves it look we look of it's looking other than self and kind. And even the perception of the world doesn't matter whether we you say well Jesus was originally black according to the story, Muhammad was originally black, you understand all these different terminologies. The, the fact of the matter is the world doesn't see you as that. So um, and this is part of the problem. So we become second class citizens and basically the God that we're really defending is the is the is the white man. You understand? That's if you really look at all the iconography, that's who we're defending. And so we will always seemingly rush to their aid or their defence um, in the protection of them. And this is what this um, 
spell does. You've got the word God, which is phonetically the same um, as the word Gad, isn't it? One of the sons of Jacob, see, oh, God. You understand the word God, and God, you hear the words phonetically. G U A R D, which is really Gad, and so one of the sons of Jacob. And it's the word God. God, God. So this is what, what happens here. We defend them, as you see people running to the aid of a particular individual. <laughs> right now in the media, who didn't claim blackness. The person didn't claim blackness, but all of a sudden we seem to be running to the aid um, of these individuals, uh, you know, uh, under the guise of, of what's being called uh, racism. You understand in that regard? Well, you know, it is what it is. But so, the fact of the matter is, this is all aspects of a mental disease, as I say, which our people have suffered from, which was necessary, as I say, for the doctor, uh, Malachi, uh, Zekabina York, uh, or Kran, to come and devise with um, various different ethric assistance to devise a necessary solution to that. And then the last aspect, the spell of Leviathan, um, which is a spell of dollar bill, so money, Excuse me. Not that you, you don't need it, but the love of it, of course. Um, you know what people are doing for it out on these streets, um, destroying their own. You know, saying, um, putting uh, effort and energy into that over and above uh, the esoteric journey. We're not talking about uh, poor righteous teachers. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, you have to clearly you have to master the physical. Uh, realm, so it's better to have money than not have it. Um, but you know what people would do for it um, in, excuse me, oftentimes will blind them from the real, as I say, uh, esoteric journey. And we can't even think of if we try and think of a society now that wouldn't even work with no money. It'd be hard even to do that. You understand? So. Um, but when you try to break away from the system and, and live by natural nature on your own land, um, without the aid of necessarily not say not to live by money, but not doing things interacting with each other for the purposes of money, you understand? Know, you try and start the, the thing of breaking away from the system in that regard and working by nature, which is a provider. Um, if you work with the system, uh, they're going to call you a cult. And, various other different names uh, to deter you from uh, you know, being the battery in the center of their system which is one of the things that we have to realize all of this has been overlaid or our eyes as say the third eye the mind's eye has been obscured and covered understood um, by way of bad information you understand the eclipse of bad information has affected our forms so we're not really seeing that we are the ones keeping the system alive uh, when everything in nature's power is trying to force um, change understood so this is the spell of Leviathan the spell of sleep to see but not see to hear um, yet not hear you understand and so only actual facts only the master's secrets, only the parterax and the new culture, factual information, the new spirituality in this day and time can break, as I say, this spell of sleep and call you to reawaken uh, once again, um, as symbolized in the Ankh Twi, and the resurrection, not only a correction of you physically, but your mental uh, resurrection for realignment, as I say, with your uh, ancestors and your emotional energy, as should be for any natural planetary nation or species on earth is directed to your own ancestors yes, and not to uh, nothingness okay so let's move uh, forward to where we are supposed to be today uh, so we've got a lot to, to cover so um, we got up to I believe uh, so sorry let me go back, go back. give you eyes for a second so i think in part one not in, i think but in part one um we went into some detail i suppose in the food for the gods um doctrine um as um let's say yeah, and uncovered as i say that whole thing in the harvest um and then in part two talked about blood we lost in religion in various ways so i suppose continuing that theme but I say also spoke about say the mental kind of uh spell or hold as I say um, that these religions uh, were done to serve you up in, in, in a sense in many different ways one scapegoat for the Muadamu or the Caucasoid race obviously 
um, and carrying out many different ills against within nature, breaking natural laws, and we being the scapegoat, let's say, to receive all of the negativity um, that arises from those actions. But obviously, in natural law, remember, you can only delay uh, judgment. You can't uh, appease judgment by way of that means. So that's what we've been for them. I suppose almost a willing, unwilling sacrifice, but willing in the sense of willing for ignorance. Um, and so I've delayed their judgment, but obviously it's come to that time now where even their own ancestors or overlords to play Deans, uh, and then later the Anunnaki um, put a time expiry in the Telemarais or in the, the arguably the genes uh, expiry for their race to end at the 6,000 year point. So they were given a dominion to rule uh, for a certain period of time and that time has now um, expired. So from 4,000 BCE in another calendar is 3761 BC in Jewish calendar all the way down to the year 2000. So their time has expired. So we went into that a uh, little bit in part one. Part two, we dealt more in uh, the blood types you see from the title there and the RH blood types. So some people obviously controversially um, you know, ask about well, how the monkeys or simians or whatever tie in um, to the Nagar Nadu or the black race, so to speak. Um, well, I say we didn't come from monkeys, we came from the waters um, of this planet as men and burn women, but obviously, uh, forcibly in a lot of instances, and say certain other um, animals through the mixing. Uh, with the Anunnaki and certain interruptions of our genes have introduced uh, other types of uh, animal elements um, into um, our DNA and so the RH factor um, was introduced by way of the interbreeding with um, simians uh, on that side so we were showing that and going into some detail about different blood types uh, and working through that to give you some understanding obviously of how it was being used and obviously the Pleiadians in the creation of their um, being in their image and after their likeness to the, the Caucasian and how they used RH negative um, so the non uh, the antigen uh, factors obviously to provide a <coughs> uh, a destructive element uh, you know as their um, hybrids uh, were to interact and intermix uh, with other different races understood so I went through that in some detail on how the planet was set up in that regard so again go back to part one and two um, to get a full and proper uh, understanding of that or on our YouTube channel now uh, or seek out the books directly um, as well from your local bookstore so that is um, Bloodlust and Religion and the Harvest so let's get back to where we were um, uh, today which I think it was somewhere around yeah, I think. Right, any questions while we just get to where we're going to be starting from from today? Um, Nabab Katni has said no questions as yet. Okay, all right, no problem. Okay, so we were dealing with the fact that um, uh, at the last time, <laughs> quite uh, in some detail, I think, um, of how diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's um, seemingly have the same system, same symptoms, excuse me, of those who have engaged in cannibalism. And so now, not to say that if your elderly relatives are suffering from these symptoms or whatever um that they have engaged in cannabis but you know so i'm not going to say put that on that situation or but they could have mixed in um with uh, people who had done and so certain diseases interesting enough the symptoms are the same so we walked you through um this fact of that eating of human beings is part of um, let's be honest it's, cut, it's a watered down version of what you're seeing in the monotheistic religions today if you watch History Channel and um, Discovery Channels and these different documentaries or whatever talking about a lot of the ancient world with the Mayans and, and other of these older uh, races on the planet you're going to see a lot of this sacrifice into to gods and they try and make it out like it was well too. we wanted to make nature reign make nature act, work, act and work for them more effectively be it sunshine be it rain for crops and different types of things they'll have you um, 
in that mindset um, that these were the, some of the reasons why they were engaging in these, you know, let's be honest, quite fairly ab abhorrent practices. However, what they're not factoring in, which is what you see directly in that Bible, yeah, Genesis chapter 19, uh, verse 17, sorry, Genesis, Revelation chapter 19, verse 17, um, was that these deities were uh, human beings. That was part of their diet, you understand? Obviously, um, which at one time, as we talked heavily, I think in part one, about the homosaurus um, side of things, you know, a certain type of lizard, carnivorous side, these red zone um, beings that were placed in that zone, also ate meat, and which included a human being, you understand? So obviously when you can see when the dinosaurs uh, got wiped out, um, you know, predominantly wiped out by way of uh, a meteorite strike, or as it was reported, um, at various points, uh, 17 million, 250,000 years ago was uh, one large incident. Remember, as um, because human being in certain instances was no longer in the diet of certain of these animals, when they defecated, uh, something was missing from the formula, isn't it? So, therefore, a certain plant life, etc., that had certainly uh, derived uh, nutrients uh, from that type of um, source uh, died out again as a result you understand so basically you know it, this is within the, the genome obviously uh, in certain instances and introduced by certain extraterrestrials as say who at humanoids or other humanoids or even some of their own species um, as food this is what talked about heavily in part one and two so this uh, disease as you see Kuru um, that they discovered in Papua New Guinea um, let's say has these similar symptoms and, and this is a reason as I say from eating human beings now we talked to you in I think this, the previous part about um, yeah Kreutfeld Jacob disease yet yeah, CJD and then you have um Variant quite felt Jacob disease, yeah, which is mad cow disease. You understand? Yeah, or a form of it, uh, mad cow disease, where the variant part of it has come as a result, as I say, of um, feeding um, offal, as they say, isn't it? To um, offal to animals. Why would do you think of that you understand but feeding the brains of sheep and other animals and giving that to cows you know is a cow is not a carnivorous creature you understand um cows eat grass understood um but for some reason as i say they decided um going against nature to feed them the brains of other animals so you've got mad cow's disease and then the human as it's transitioned over to human beings um it is v uh, cjd you understand so it arose from mad cow's disease but that's not its origin so there was already a version of um cjd um, which arose as you can see there from um human beings eating other human beings you understand so uh, in that regard or engaging in cannibalism cannon bow you see there or uh, Kohen bow yeah as we see those Levitical priests um, in uh, Malachi uh, chapter 2 the last verse of that particular chapter um, being scolded um, by uh, say Malachi in that regard um, but they obviously they're coming back and saying well hold on a minute somebody like you another extraterrestrial told us that this was this was the right thing to do you know saying get human beings to commit evil acts so it causes them to secrete more adrenaline which makes the meat or the flesh more tasty uh, for these gods or overlords who like meat who like barbecue and they don't mind if it's animal meat or human meat so CJD in its original form um, as I say provides the same symptoms and the interesting thing you got to ask yourself well, why were they over there in Papua New Guinea um, researching this particular disease and have linked it to trying to cure things like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's um, disease and these different things why are they over there uh, studying 
the same. Multiple studies. When you start looking at some of these terminology, you see multiple studies um, looking at this in the sand. So somewhere along the line, <laughs> yeah, human beings have been engaged in these practices, copying, um, you know, their their gods uh, and, and overlords in this regard, being aligned with them. Hence, why you see cannibalism and all these things all throughout the so-called good book. Yeah, the so-called good book. So this is what we're, we're seeing here in terms of uh, these uh, diseases and the correlation, as I say, to cannibalism or the eating of human uh, flesh in this regard, yeah, in terms of some of the symptoms that we're seeing. So within the various different um, orders and bloodlines that we were talking about um, here on Earth, the different sort of cat, um the red and the blue as it pertains to them means something different for us but the red and the blue as it pertains to them obviously is dealing with uh, the vampires who obviously um, you know uh, lack hemoglobin clearly in the blood and then obviously need to uh, take that in the form from other uh, human beings understood uh, so we see uh, going all the way back cold-blooded the dinosaur line as we spoke about in part one and two and then you've got the other side which is the lichen so the the k9 um side um which is say warm-blooded mammalian obviously originally um so you've got these two bloodlines um and so we see that played out in a lot of uh on television, not various different series, etc., but it obviously has some element of truth uh, into it. Um, and as I say, as I, here we see, we talked about the symbolism in the blood, uh, the draconians, the wing class, we went through that in part one and shown you the symbolism of that, not only in their Bible, but also you can see that recorded in the walls of ancient Sumeria, um, and then how their hierarchy, I say, plays down into the Illuminati and then I say um, various different I say uh, aspects of those so-called secret societies um, and how they have influence in the in the world today yeah, and the head lizard or the head one in charge uh, in a lizard birth in the same as they have a lizard birth or a lizard birth so they're God, deity, I'm saying their Jesus story, etc., are about the harvest, are about the rapture, which ties into the word raptor. Yeah, raptor is you saw in Jurassic Park, the raptors or velociraptors, concerned the eating of human beings at that time, right back into that, I say, dinosaur line. So, as I say, there's always a, a nine way to see it, if, there's a, if you can use that symbolism, and a six way to see certain things so sometimes the stories are very similar because as we I'm sure you maybe in previous classes remember they, they seek to these secret societies seek to eclipse the sun of righteousness in the sand and when you look at the symbol of the farm a so called symbol it shows remember the different rays nine different rays trying to penetrate um, here on earth to show that well that our formation is trying to penetrate but the various different frequencies etc out there try and block that block you from receiving the the right type of affirmation coming to you in the form of information there's so much going on so much noise etc that it's difficult for us to contemplate it's difficult for us to take time out and connect so we would receive the right um affirmation and we're not around our structures etc which will help to enhance us spiritually like pyramids the magaraj for example which referred to a journey within um, which helped us to say to to formulate a more positive frequency but here um as the book um uh Kabir Gadam goes into in some detail and we just picked out a few um, of these uh, of cannibals within the society have been picked up throughout the ages the, um, the ones that we kind of have, have developed some form of notoriety um, within the society today so here this one is the Alpha Packer uh, born January 21 1842 uh, passed on uh, passed away April 23 1905 until she was an uh, American gold prospector but was convicted for cannibalism yeah so on 5th of february 9th 1874 he left with five others on an expedition for the colorado mountains interesting place two months later packer returned from the expedition alone when questioned of the whereabouts of the men that had been with him packer said he killed them in self-defense and were forced to eat their remains in order to survive the elements yes yeah, so this is a kind of 
a kind of classic kind of thing, isn't it? That happens in certain movies or whatever. Um, you know, when that plane crashes or whatever in the mountains, that's one of those things, isn't it? That they say, he human beings, or could you eat human being um, in order to survive? Or would you eat it? Well, the, the issue, the problem is you eat it, you might get uh, Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease um, because nature is saying, hell no, you understand? So therefore, there are things in um, the natural system of things that, that prevent that, at least for our species anyway. So Albert Fish, uh, May 19, 1870 uh, to January 16, 1936, says he was a true life monster um, in every sense of the word, serial killer, obviously serial killer is a more modern term, but Fish kidnapped, murdered and consumed a 10 year old girl from Manhattan. Six years later, Fish taunted the innocent girl's family by sending a letter to them graphically detailing his crime and the pleasure he received in committing it. The letter was traced back to him and he was arrested and convicted. So we see these things and, you know, uh, you have to go back to the origin of, of certain things and say so you can see certain programming in the genes. The nature of these individuals is based upon the nature of their overlords. This is what many don't really want to say. And so and actually their, their God is where they got all this from. Yeah, and if the being in the image, they're in the image and after the likeness of their God, then guess what their God was? Yes, <laughs> a, a killer, cannibal. Understood? This is well, that's not my God. Well, who, which God is it then? You understand? Because your understanding of God is part of the spell. Because God and the devil is one the same being according to monotheism. Yeah, and if you look at the so-called good book and you analyze it with your eyes open, you step back and read and see, you know, what was happening. There's a reason why um, Abel <laughs> and his uh, meat offering was accepted and Cain, who brought vegetables to the table, um, was rejected. And Sandwich tells you about the nature of, again, who you're dealing with. Right? I suppose if you come home or you're lucky enough and say to come home to a meal you've had a hard day's work and if you're not a vegetarian someone puts a plate of salad in front of you you're going to get vexed because you don't see it as a, a substantial uh, as tearing into chicken wings or whatever you eat steak and all that kind of stuff you understand and you see that as more substantial than uh, vegetables in the if that's of your nature so these things as I say have, have made their way into society and, and there's the kind of hidden Truths, the hidden truths in the center of what we find ourselves in today and the real nature of people. You don't know who people are in the, in the comfort of their own home or who they are really in the sand. We, we interact in certain environments that are highly um, regulated in, the sand in terms of workplaces and things of that nature. Understood? And as I say, now, some people are going to be hurt by this as so it's not to attack people's religions but how far are we going to wait in the sand? what date are you going to now put on the return of, of Jesus Christ what date are you going to now put on the return of Muhammad what date are you going to put on the return of Moses until you wake up and find out it's all a joke everything that you've been told up until today is nothing but a lie you cannot believe anything that comes out of the Muadam or the Caucasoid's mouth it's certainly not for your betterment or interest. You have to go back and check everything out that has to be said based upon factual history and behavior of their behavior, certainly to us. You understand? And as I say, when you start peeling back what is really taking place, you're getting a watered down version of what you're seeing a lot of some of these ancient cultures who are interacting with these reptilians and Pleiadians. Um, you know, in terms of what they were up to. Now, uh, so that mindset, as I say, what happens in particular in this society, Master Teacher spoke about this in previous lectures, is that when um, we do something in this society, for example, um, when we do something in this society, you notice that basically um, it creates a, a pattern. So let's say, I don't know, a black person, for example, or black male saying drugs. Yeah. What happens is now 
that monotype is not really a stereotype stereotype is two things that monotype then sticks yeah so it then through association now that image or that crime now is labeled against the whole of the race you understand so therefore you see a black man in a nice car he's wearing jewelry certain things the programming there yeah, the subliminal programming even if you're black like you don't have to be even white even if you're black you might think oh that, what's that person up to you're not thinking he's a banker you're not thinking oh this is a successful business person unless you're you know what I mean you've been programmed to say oh this is associated with crime or drugs so on and so forth because that's how they made it in this society isn't it they locked it's been in Britain they locked down all the doors and the avenues to make money understood so if you wanted big money you have to go work an alternative means or ways of, of, of getting it so to speak and if we learn that from we learned it from them isn't it the corporate world that's where we learned it from the corporate world is where we got it from yeah they what do they do what are the mcdonald's of that the world of, mcdonald's of this world the hagen darcy's the you know these various different things they addict you to food products and when they get sued because somebody links the products that they've been selling to various diseases that happen in human being they pay off they do big fines isn't it and they introduce salads and other things healthy things into the menu um, so they can get away with all the junk that they were addicting you to uh, for all these years so they get away they don't go to prison so where are the street street use learning all of this stuff to make money off of um addicting others to products that you then provide to them do you understand they learn it from the very society we're in in turn we have legal addictive things that we sell to human beings and we have illegal things that we addict and sell to human beings you understand the legal stuff still kills you yeah, in nature's room still kills you so if I kill you slowly or I kill you over 30 years I'm still killing you and it's just that we in a society instead of working on balance we tend to work off of extremes uh, we went through that in part one with the two brothers the two different uh, ideologies obviously of Inky and Inlil which we see played out I'd say through our society today so furthermore Andre uh Shai Katilu, yeah, Ukrainian serial killer and cannibal, 50 murders. Understood that he's responsible for. You see here, uh, Armin uh, Maywes, yeah, then, um, so depraved, pathetic individual from Rotterdam, Germany, 2001. He posted an advertisement on the internet which read, Looking for a well built 18 to 30 year old uh, to be slaughtered and consumed. Unbelievably, Myra has received a serious, serious response from a willing participant. The two men met on Christmas Day and proceeded to commit and videotape some of the most emotional acts on earth. Myers was arrested after revealing the details of his crime. He's currently serving a life sentence in a jail prison. So this is the mindset. It's a, it's a certain type of mindset, remember, um, that has come through. And remember the combination of... Um, Remember, the Pleiadians coming together with the Anunnaki um, in what is referred to as a designer gene, DUF 1220 is its classification. You had a designer gene um, which birthed obsessional traits within um, the Muadamu, you understand? Which was different to the 24 skills that were introduced as part of Project 24, which was given to certain skills given to uh, females and certain skills given to males, which through, um, you know, uh, genetic uh, growth um, down the generations, certain people would inherit those skills. Could be art or you know, drawing in that sense. You know I mean, it could be sewing you know so some people are exceptionally skilled at certain things you know they're not just they can't just draw the way they draw is like it's photo realistic do you understand what i'm saying this is just it's just a talent beyond the over and above the normal individual and these were skills that were placed as say as part of project 24 to help the race um develop and obviously then we had you know certain um orders would be a better way to say it which helped to develop that talent because we knew that it would progress through the generations you understand and hence why um not a class system or um 
or caste system, which they had adversely, uh, which they got from the Anunnaki, from the, Dra the Dravidians, in terms of that side of things, but actually developing those talents and abilities um, within orders. And you see that today, I suppose, in, in various different so called university systems, um, where you see and trade bodies, alumni, so on and so forth, where you see those. Uh, types of setup and things all based in say around uh, original systems that we had in, in ancient uh, Africa um, you know way back when so as I say we see in this horrendous crap and what happens is going back to the point of the news that was that so there'll be a, a monotype associated with a certain crime linked by a race yeah, uh, in this country as well, I think there was a few, Asian, few Asian men, few Asian men that were targeting um, white women and had them on the street. You understand, um, using them for their own adverse sexual purposes, and then allegedly uh, prostituting them out, so on and so forth. So that tag now becomes against a lot of all Asian men or young Asian men. But yet, when Mukasu men do a crime it's not associated oftentimes with them. Or if it is, when the person gets convicted of something, doing something heinous, there is a, a, a almost a, um, a, a, say, a whole campaign that goes behind them of, of the public needing to understand the circumstances behind the mind of this individual. Whereas no other race gets this kind of explanation of how they arrived in this situation or scenario. They get the full punishment they're associated well it must be eat they must be inherently evil but when they do something now obviously what we see is um justification you know so in the yard oh, the person had a certain background it was abused there was this that trying to make excuses to hide the true nature of who you're dealing with here you know and so the point is is that this becomes dangerous in a sense of well how is it every time you see the same type of characters serial killers with the same type of traits or whatever but yet no pattern is being formed so obviously people are getting duped over and over again because the patterns are not forming recently here there's a big uproar about um a case where as i say a policeman uh is accused or, or well, been arrested for for murdering um a woman so you know this place of trust etc and then the this, the case has shifted from that individual to all men now being on, on trial um, in that situation. So I'm saying not to say that um, that's not an argument uh, or discussion to be had in that regard, but it's interesting. It's always moved away from the individual, you understand, who's uh, guilty of this particular crime. So we're not building patterns here. And that programming here means that we're not analyzing the nature of individuals we're not programmed that way we're programmed to forgive programmed to alleviate programmed to forget about what is taking place in front of us this is a mental disease and illness that needs to be analyzed checked um, and corrected certainly amongst our uh, own race and people so we can have a we can have a police brutality discussion and somebody says well Bruce brutality but what about blacks killing other black people well the reality of the situation they're two different things you understand and why is why is a black person killing another black person black on black crime in a country and not just a crime these are things you have to think about you understand uh, why are the police allowed to get away with saying well the community is not helping us <laughs> to, to solve these crimes you understand the community is not helping us they get allowed to blame the, the very victims um, of the crime no other job or profession can you do that if um you're i don't know you work in social housing or you're a landlord or whatever and the, the people are not paying the rent yeah they're gonna look to the workers to recover the money to keep the business going and the sand don't sit there um blaming the the tenants for for their poor ma the poor management failings of that particular organization but when it comes to the police you can blame black people if crimes are not being solved um, in those areas well we can't solve this crime unless the people help us well surveillance etc you've got a stop and search you're doing you should be able to solve it without the help of um, individuals if they choose not to which is a person's obviously a citizen choice some people do report crimes it's not, not saying that black people don't they do report crimes 
um, or things of that nature if they seemingly wish to do so and some people don't do it yeah because of the dangers inherently that come with that so the patterns as i say we don't see them being formulated um, in this regard. Obviously, Jeffrey Dahmer here, much more famous um, in this regard, um, as you can see here, um, and the classification of a serial killer. And let's be honest, in this society today, even when they commit these heinous crimes, they're celebrated, aren't they? And when I say celebrated in inverted commas, meaning to say that there's movies, there's documentaries, it's things which are made studying the crimes of these individuals studying the mindset who the person was so on and so forth the whole industry based upon um crime killing yeah and that kind of mindset as i say murder is and these crimes different things up program in the atmosphere almost on a daily basis in the same way you think about analyze your television for a few days and see what programs are, uh, are coming on the tv we've almost normalized um violence um against other human beings uh, within our culture so they want to run and say hey um drill music or these different types of music oh it's promoting it's promoting violence it's promoting this it's promoting that but what about all the different programs being shown every day about murder solving crimes kidnapping of human beings there's, there's programs for every type of crime there's a program for it even now there's a program where the, the, the serial killer helps the police to solve crimes it's getting more and more dastardly dastardly now the same because the imagination just thinks of more and more wicked things that we can put uh, on the television and basically this becomes normalized in, in all of us if you watch or take in that, that kind of media type or whatever the case may be and you know let's see kids are killing now without consequence without too much consequence you know what I'm because it's fueling a certain nature um, inside of us as uh, say which again self-destruction versus self uh, preservation all this coming from certain groups of extraterrestrials uh, James Douglas third uh, Marcus of Queensbury uh, which you know boxing comes from the Marcus of Queensbury reported that when the Act of Union was signed in 1707 which placed the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Scotland under the same monarch disruption allowed 10 year old James Douglas to escape he then entered the kitchen of Queensbury House and slaughtered a young servant. The report says that Douglas roasted the boy alive on a revolving spit. Then he ate sections of the boy before being apprehended. After the event, Douglas was known as the cannibalistic idiot. And the oven he used to kill the boy can still be seen in the Parliament Allowances office. That's as I say. You know, the modern version of that today is making documentaries and programs to study um, the nature of these particular um, individuals uh, permeating in our society. So, as I say, you are programmed as cons we are programmed as consumers, um, as I say, to eat all different kind of meat. You understand? Uh, everyday flesh eating, so on and so forth. Um, and say like fattening us up, fattening us up, um, say to be uh, snacked upon um, later. So if you need know, Revelation chapter nineteen, any questions? Uh, no questions. Uh, there is. Oh, I do. Oh, it's not a question. It's not a question. Um, I apologise. There's no questions. Sorry, there's no questions. You said. No, there's no questions. Uh, sorry, uh, Harar M. Habab is saying you've got a problem responding to messages. Uh, uh, just uh, just to one. Um, I, I, um, I haven't had another response uh, from the person as yet. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, his permissions are there, so you should be able to, but let me know if it's still a problem. Um, is it in the chat facility you, you can't respond? Is that what it's up in? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay, what I'll do, I'll make you the host and then, um, you know, me as the co-host. Uh, you need to make me a co-host. Not that particular need, but you make me a co-host. So I'll make you the host. Hopefully your permission should be there. Right, okay, so uh, moving on then. So you can see here when we were looking at these uh, bloodlines, you see there uh, phonetically um, the 
the two different bloodlines, the red um, and the blue blooded. I uh, showed you obviously the hierarchy getting up to the winged uh, draconian class. And you see the blue blood um, relates to where the mother um, is uh, Caucasian or Caucasoid understood. Um, and that's one type of bloodline, uh, which is the blue blood, maybe considered by some the pure blood. Yes, and then you see on the other side where the mother is uh, Nagarnadu or Negroid, understood, and you see the mixed um, bloodline where the mother, as I say, is uh, black, and then the father obviously is um, white in that regard. So you understand that basically women are shapeshifters, and so therefore a woman, a black woman with stronger genes, remember she drops her vibrational rate down uh, to match her man and obviously um, that combination um, can put out her soul so see if she wants the connection restored she would have to then mix back with somebody who has uh, stronger uh, genetics so that combination is why you see that in, in that particular way because obviously I, arguably not always the case but looks like us um, but um, has their mindset understood um, which you uh, see in that regard so um, yeah that combination I think as a black a black woman black man uh, produces star children understood a black man and a white woman uh, produces what is referred to as a son of God and then when you have a a, a a black woman and a white man that produces a son of man so, and so there's a lower in there because remember even the Caucasian woman has the ability she's also a shapeshifter has the ability to raise her vibration right so obviously she raises it to match her man and then as I say uh, therefore as I say she can raise up spiritually she can become Nubian or whatever the case would be by way of that mixture you understand so therefore you've got these various different combinations now we're not here to tell people who they should be having sex with or who to mix with not mix with the issue is is that basically in all of this situation here is that the art of sex is not being is seemingly being taught yeah even though yeah, that, that could be arguably questionable because we see a lot of unnatural activities taking place uh in the so-called sexual arena but the science of it is not being expressed you understand and so not being taught so people are doing things breaching um, laws in natural nature and then inheriting certain consequences that can be generational you understand but, uh, in order to fix um, and doing so in ignorance you understand so they're getting part of the, the story um, and not the other part and even now um you know, some people want to advance their rights uh, to a way where they don't even have to tell you that they were previously a man and now they're a woman or vice versa well you know everybody's gender is important so you know so you need to be transparent around certain things or at least up front you know, so which women have had to deal with I suppose men maybe less so but um, in that regard if a woman didn't have kind of children for example you understand know, and you know they got choices to make you understand so do you tell the, the man or whatever up front that you know you can't have children or do you tell them later down the line and risk you know if you know you wanted children that can be a, a problem so it all tests the character of individuals now you know people want to advocate that you're not allowed to say that somebody's had a particular change or whatever the case may be um, and it's the same issue, same problem. So these are the types of things that say that come into play, but more importantly for us is the genetic kiss doctrine as expressed uh, and taught um, by the, the master teacher, Dr. Malachi KZ York, is very important because, as I say, people are, through ignorance, are basically uh, creating generational problems for themselves and issues, obviously, in this life as well. Um, through through ignorance and in society is, is funny they'll put you in prison put you in prison for marrying two women uh, and having a family con in a controlled manner put you in prison in this country so in the west you're going to put you in prison for marrying two women in the sandbars I was watching some interview the other day Will Chamberlain Will Chamberlain claimed to have slept with 20,000 women there was a man on uh, Love Island on one of these programs he said he slept with a thousand women he wasn't even I don't think he was in 30 years old 
looked. And so, which do you think you understand, is more detrimental to the to the species? Now, we teach stay out of people's bedrooms, but which do you think is more detrimental? If I see a thousand women and spreading that combination in ignorance, because a lot of these people don't know nothing about the science of sex, mixing of genes, spreading of different DNA of different DNA, spreading diseases, so on and so forth. If you have that kind of disposable way of, you know, using sexual activity, that obviously in nature has certain types of consequences. But if you take care of your situation and you you got it controlled, you're going to go to prison for that. You know what I'm saying? If you have uh, more than uh, one uh, woman. You know what I'm so there's what nature um, has and deals with and natural laws and then you've got what men can say and do and the two oftentimes are opposed to each other you know saying? and even man's law goes against their own God's law uh, oftentimes um, as we see as it was talked about with the New World Order the um, diminishment of the power of religion and we're seeing obviously now uh, royal families and things of that nature uh, losing their power all over the world uh, any questions? No, no questions. No questions. Okay, so we touched upon, as I say, these symptoms of here, um, and um, as we see there with the uh, cannibal and the symptoms appropriate. Now, when we uh, look at the brain, uh, and we've talked about, as I say, the um, uh, previously. Um, Excuse me. We are uh, we are uh, a, a, a beings who've come from the water. So I suppose starting off uh, in a, a reptilian existence, um, and saying part one and two went through in some detail um, around you know how those lines split off um, at a certain point um, for us to become mammals and reptiles, and, and particularly in uh, ancient Egypt, um, as you see at the center of the Dendora star map, you see the deity, uh, sacred feminine uh, deity, um, <clears throat> uh, Patawaret in the sand, um, where they get the word Torah from, yeah, Patawaret, and the hippopotamus is a combination, obviously, mammals who are also reptilian. So we acknowledge the reptilian side um, of our nature and our story of how we got here and how we arrived at is obviously found in, in the birth process. So when you look at the brain, we sort of look at three aspects um, here. Um, so neocortex, as you see on the diagram, limbic, and then the reptilian brain, um, which is this uh, stem here in the sand showing, as I say, this link to um, dinosaurs yeah, or homosaurus or homosaurian, yeah, the humanoid, um, which came from, as I say, interaction with the, or interception to genes from beings from the Draco uh, star constellation, and the same, it's also known as the R complex, um, and it helps, as I say, to um, regulate certain functions um, in the human body. Now, the Holy Tablets in the first chapter goes into how the different lions evolve and how, as I say, uh, different dinosaurs, and even in part one and two, he went into uh, Stenicochiosaurus um, and certain lions where, as I say, the genes have gone down and developed uh, a certain type of uh, physical response to the environment uh, that we find ourselves in. Yes. And so we have to acknowledge that side of things, which I say you've been taught and certainly following the master teachers. Um, teachings or doctrine for a number of years this was dealt with you know, saying, in, in great detail um, in the 90s understood and so when you look at certain of your characteristics you can see absolutely you can see the reptilian side of it's the scales the web between your fingers or if you look at our early um, life as a spermatozoa then you can see obviously those uh, things there so it still uh, finds itself um, in us today uh, as the reptilian brain some refer to it as uh, you can see here that regulating heart rate breathing body temperature understood um, balance so even that we are warm blooded we have the ability to uh, regulate our internal temperature um, from within as opposed to um, 
needing our temperature regulated externally. Um, and you see here, fight or flight response, um, aggression, domination, repetition, of a certain, uh, desire to hoard resources. So you can see <laughs> when you start looking at these things, because in our ethics, um, one of the things that it speaks about is not playing sport for um, uh, for competition in the sense of I'm um, battling against that person to destroy them, beat them, do you understand in these, these kind of things, but playing it more in a fun context. And obviously, for us probably growing up here in the Western Hemisphere, reading something like that, it would seem odd. I'm not playing a, a basketball game or a football match or whatever to whoop the other sides, you know, whoop the other sides behind, so on and so forth, stunt on them, do whatever. But the reality is it brings out certain a certain type of nature um, in us, which not that we're seeking to shut it down, but it's not the basis to form one society from, because obviously sports and arguments lead to you know, fighting and different things of that nature. So we're obviously about peace. So yes, play sport, have fun. It can be, I mean, it might be a little bit of verses in there, but not taking it to the point of, as I say, fighting or even kidding each other, which sounds crazy, but obviously, we live in the UK, which as I say, has had a history of known hooliganism and things of that nature, all connected to sport and sporting situations. You know, so people get into fights uh, about different teams, expressing, you know, getting stressed and different things about what is ultimately a game. So these are types of things to manage holistically. Obviously, we need aspects of this. You see here um, that it has an element of survival, so we're not. Um, that combination as say needs to control us certain things that we need to control it not that it would um, control us understood as you can see there the amount of power needed to uh, achieve full brain function uh, is 54 watts of electricity so we are a bioelectrical being insofar as that we generate um, internal electricity to run uh, a number of different processes uh, within our body, but this is evidence, as I say, uh, in the previous sessions of the uh, Homo saurian um, in human beings today. So, um, um, importantly, as we've been talking about the different races and foods for the gods doctrine, they say first will be last, and last will be first to go. So, as you can see, as we talked about the, the virus uh, and different types of um, events which have been staged or executed in order to eliminate as you say this hybrid or certain groups and say of this hybrid hybrid races yeah fake or anti-nature or not in line with natural nature um races understood on the planet which is those extraterrestrial overlords simply wanting to get rid of um their creation again like it was in ancient times let's say with the if you think about Enlil and the creation of uh, some of the early man did what did not want them to survive he thought that the mixing of anarchy genes um with uh human genes in, in that class special or the genes of mankind uh one may say was a was a bastardization of the race and if you remember when the 50,000 year cycle came in and the access to the planet was um, to shift, he did not want to tell the Muadamu about the uh, flood uh, that was to take place. Understood. So he wanted to see them die as a result of some of these natural disasters uh, which happened. So we're at that point again uh, in a similar sense uh, right now. But here, these extraterrestrial overlords are... are um, not just hiding the fact that these natural things are taking place or natural phenomena, they are instigating um, a number of phenomena to get rid of, uh, say, certain hybrids, which are expected to be um, gone by the year 2060. Uh, and here we see, I think the diagram we showed early before, or maybe in part two, where you can see, as I say, our story um, within the birthing process recorded in the, the genes, you know, so the legacy of the species, as well as obviously each individual um, of the different processes, as I say, which have arisen um, out of, as I say, 
people the wrong word is evolution more for us is out of revolution in the sense out of that growth process we've seen as I say um, all of the different different challenges and things that were overcome now in a as I say a, a stable uh, birth process which reflects as I say all the changes that we go through uh, in order to provide uh, this humanoid um, you know looking uh, ifrit being you understand which is um, the first stage um, of our ancestors uh, those uh, Murazaku uh, also known as providers or Whiskeyans in, in their humanoid uh, form but you also see clearly um, our reptilian side or saurian uh, side uh, within there also but it's a water based planet um and so you can see, you judge a creature also by the environment. It's, it's a water-based planet. We just happen to be breathing on the surface uh, less dense water than you see in a sea, river, lake, so on and so forth in the form of water vapor. Okay, so um, so we've got some questions for you then uh, in a poll. Uh, just to check some understanding before we get into the next uh, phase of class so I'm gonna start the poll give you uh, it's now 1452 approximately so uh, we'll give you to three o'clock um, to uh, pick this up sorry uh, hurrah M her bad we need to make me the host I think again because I can't run the poll from here uh, any questions in the meantime yes it, there's one from um, Judith. Um, she wants to answer live. She wants to answer live on this one. So the diagram does not have lines pointing to the homo sorted, suited, S A U T E D. She's saying, and the other areas, can you point them out? Sorry, you have to, you have to read that question again. Right. The diagram does not have lines pointing to the homo. So I'm, I'm not sure she's trying to say Saurus here, but it's staying sorted. So it must be. And the other areas, can you point them out? Homosaurus, she's saying, yeah. Homosaurus. Yeah, remember, the, we, we start off um, with the uh, dinosaur line. Yeah, so we start off in that regard. Sorry, all right, Emma Bab, can you make me the, uh, maybe the host, yeah. So we start off, remember, in the in our Saurian line. So we start off as um, what what would be best described as uh, dinosaurs, understood? And we separate it out into um, two different species. This this would be a reference if we go to the uh, holy tablets. Holy Tablets chapter one, tablet nine. Yeah, and so you can obviously read your own references. This it says, um, and verse 80, yeah, page 81. Uh, and it says, um, within 20 million years, it's talking about, so say, different um, growth processes of our species, yeah, all this evolving from a single cell. Um, amoeba, yeah, so I think it's a very simple uh, life form in the waters, obviously, to um, the development of certain dinosaurs. And we've explained this before, but we'll reread it again. So it's saying, uh, so 360 million years before Demetrodon, so Demetrodon was a type of dinosaur, let's say, with a large uh, sail upon its back, um, which helped it to regulate um, heat. Yeah, or its body temperature. This eventually became um, the uh, the spinal column uh, in human beings. Obviously, um, we have the ability, as we were reading before, to regulate our body temperature. Understood? So this is talking about 360 million years after this uh, Demetrodon. So within 20 million years, they split into two groups. 81. One became the aggressive species, which were the diapsid. The other one was the passive, 
the Synapsid. 82, they became, they began to compete for supremacy. 83, from generation to generation, each line improved and perfected itself. 84, when the diapsids and the synapsids moved further up the evolutionary chain, they began to split in different direction. 85, the diapsids had two holes, two openings in the skull, which evolved into all modern day reptilians, such as turtles, crocodiles, alligators, lizards, etc. 86, while the synapsids had a single hole in the back of the skull, which evolved into all proto mammals, such as Demetrodon, armadillo, whales, dogs, cows, human, and all other mammals that evolved into this line. The two holes allowed the skull not to squeeze the brain. Proto mammals were changing from reptilian to mammalian and from mammal like reptilian posture. They took possession of the land masses for 50 million years and dominated the planet. Yeah, and it, it goes on and on. So, obviously, here, when you talk about um, the Homo saurian line, remember, the Homo saurian line is coming from the amphibious phase because obviously we were. We were, all of us were that first. We were water-based creatures. We were, um, which means we say dinosaur, it's a, it's a really, um, we're looking at the, the word, maybe it's tying into lizards. What's a lizard? Lizards are, in the sense, reptiles in that sense. So, um, so yes, so it is really happening at this early phase of us, obviously in the waters, and then obviously becoming land-based creatures in that regard and say we diverted or we split off into um two types of individual or being and it's the beings from draco remember who interacted or intercepted that genome that formed a more humanoid type of dinosaur individual or dinosaur um person um in that regard um which eventually as we spoke about in part one is it lifted off the planet um and relocated uh, elsewhere and then but here on earth obviously we have uh, reptilian and mammalian distinction do you understand so um, in that regard so we still have those traits today so we say point out obviously here you're seeing the journey in the womb process so we all started off um, as dinosaurs and then in the diagram here which we pointed out earlier we have the R complex or the reptilian aspects of our brain which is the remnants say of that um, of the development or growth in us at that point, just say. You see here, uh, here links on the reptilian brain, obviously ties in, say, to that brain stem, um, as we, we talked about earlier, um, tied into a certain type of dinosaur with a large uh, sail uh, on its back, which eventually became our, our spinal columns. And one more information on that, um, Holy Tablets Chapter 1 is an excellent uh, source or reference um, for human development in that regard. Any other questions? Or if that's not answered your question, then just give me, uh, ask additional questions and we'll get better clarification. Yeah, Julie, Julie said um, thank you for that. It's much clearer now. Okay, no problem. And I tapped a bit of uh, Any other questions? There are no, no. other questions. No, no further questions. Okay, so let's run this poll. Uh, before it's getting out of it. Okay, so let's uh, let's run this poll. Uh, um, ah, what a shame! What a shame! It's not on this section. It's on the other one, isn't it? What's uh, the best way to do this? Uh, just bear with me one second. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy it across uh, from the other uh, session. So just bear with me one second. Yep. Just bear with us one second. Take a couple of minutes.
All right, uh, it seems you can't copy the poll across uh, from. Um, uh, yeah, you can't copy the poll across, so we'd have to do it a bit old school. So I've copied it into Word. Uh, so you can sort of see the answers there. So what we'll do, I'll give you sort of 10 minutes or so to uh, answer those questions. And then um, what I'll do, I'll move it up because there's a 10th question, uh, which you can't see on the screen and I'll just keep the size in. That makes it a bit too small for you. Let's keep it to two pages. Yeah, let's keep it to two pages. Okay, uh, so see how you get on. Uh, so just uh, either you can put your answers in the chat or just keep a record uh, for yourself. Um, and then we'll walk through the answers together um, yeah, in about uh, so I'll give, you, I'll give you 10 minutes 10 minutes to answer the questions so the guys on Facebook uh, you sure the guys and girls or excuse me males and females uh, and women on Facebook you should also be able to see these questions so you can put those in the um, in the chat as well right Nabab um, yes Yes. There's a comment here saying that the questions are so small. Um, well, basically, it's difficult to read and they ha they're wearing glasses. So it's going to be difficult to have the two pages on one. Unless you do it. All right. Okay. So we'll do it. Um, okay. No problem. So, all right. So we'll give you a minute to answer each question. So, um, so it's 15.06 now. So, um, well, let's say 30 seconds. You get 30 seconds to answer each question. So five minutes overall. So first question. So which is the so-called brotherhood that represents a, a group of hybrids? So one choice. So which is the so-called brotherhood that represents a certain group of hybrids? Yes, this. Uh, so answer one, the black brotherhood of Anubis. Answer two, the white brotherhood of Seth. Uh, answer three, the White Brotherhood of Anupu. Answer four, the boy from Brazil. Or answer five, the Proud Boys. So pick one of those.
Right, okay, next question. So, uh, question number two. Uh, what deity in Kadem ancient Mahmat was associated with foreign peoples? Yeah, so what deity in Kadem ancient Mahmat was associated with foreign peoples? Uh, tick as many answers that apply. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, what antige antigenic trait do all the presidents since George Washington have in common? A uh, single answer is correct. So what antigenic trait do all the presidents since George Washington have in common? Answer one, they, are all, they all have Caucasoid mothers. Answer two, they are all RH positive blood types. Answer three, they are all O positive blood types. Answer four, they are all RH and negative blood types. Next question. Which of the following Muthiad Mutatalu uh, does not have RH negative blood type? Single answer uh, for the choice here. So answer one, Anunnaki shapeshifters. Answer two, Pleiadians. Answer three, Older Barons. Um, answer four, Draconians. And answer five, all of the above RH negative blood types. So which of the following Mufiyad Mutatalu does not have RH negative blood types? Okay, moving on to question five then. Uh, what are the trigger words that would initiate? Let's move this onto the other page, make it a bit easier for you. So, what are the tr three trigger words that would initiate the self destruction of the Kakasnadu Salau? Two of which can be found in their book of Revelations 9, chapter 9, verse 11. So single choice. Answer one. Ab Ra Kadabra. Answer two, six six six. Answer three, Abaddon, Apollyon, and Abu Deen. Answer four, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. There you go. So answer one, Abra Kadabra. Answer two, six six six. Answer three, Abaddon, Apollyon, Abu Deen. Answer four, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a bit of a strange question. I think the answer's in the questionnaire. But, so that should be a nice, easy one for you. Question six, moving on. Two-part question A and B. So two uh, 
possible single answers, I think. Uh, what is the codified name of DUF1220, responsible for primate brain expansion, also known as the designer gene? <laughs> well, you've already got it there in the answer. In the question, uh, what chromosome is it on? Um, so select one from question one to three, which is obvious, and then select uh, one answer from four to six. Yeah, so... Um, Yes, <laughs> on that one. So a badly worded question there. So, uh, but yeah, nice and easy for you. So two part, yeah, what's the codified name? Uh, and then what chromosome is it on? So next question, what two simian species were used in the creation of the sand people? So when we say creation, uh, it may be better to describe as interception of the genes. So what two simian species? So we've got answer one, the chimpanzee and gorilla. Uh, answer two, baboon, mandrill. Maybe I should say mandrill, not madrill, mandrill. Moving in. Uh, Answer three, rhesus monkey and the gibbon. Answer four, yellow-tailed woolly monkey and the orangutan. Concerned. So what two simian species were used in the creation of sand people? Well, maybe creation is a bit of a, a probably interception of the genes within the sand people. Yeah, specifically that led to the RH the antigen um, blood type being introduced into the genome. So what two simian species? Okay, next question then. So question eight, uh, what two simian species were used in the creation of Cro-Magnum and the Neanderthal men? Uh, answer one, baboon, mandrill. Answer two, gorilla and orangutan. Answer three, the koala and the gibbon. And answer four, chimpanzee, rhesus monkey. Uh, pick up these last two questions so question nine what star constellation were the three great apes seems to be a spelling B today uh, were sent from what star constellation were the three giant apes sent here from answer one Orion answer two Arcturus answer three Pleiades answer four Sirius or Cyrus I'm sorry Uh, 
And uh, finally, what city in Canada were the remains of True Don found? Answer one, Montreal, Canada. Answer two, Quebec. Answer three, Alberta. And answer four, Ottawa. So what city in Canada were the remains of True Don found? This is uh, question 10. Those on for a few more seconds. Okay, answers in the chat, please. So let's go back up, or if somebody wants to come on live and give the answer, you're more than welcome to do so. So, um, first question Which so called brotherhood represents a certain group of hybrids? Uh, Answers, please, in the chat. Don't be shy. Uh, any answers, moderator? Any answers or facilitators? Any answers? Right. Um, there is a few answers, um, quite a few different answers. Okay. Um, the, uh, the first one's answered it from Owen. He says, it's the brothers where was it the boys from Brazil okay what other answers anybody else what other people said that was that was the only person who replied to question one question one boys from Brazil um yeah but interesting answer actually interesting answer but not the correct one the correct answer here for the hybrids um is uh, the White Brotherhood of Seth. So this is uh, answer number two. Yeah, the White Brotherhood of Seth. Um, and if I can do something fancy with the computer here, just bear with me. Then I need to do that. Let's see if we can put both on the screen at the same time. Just bear with me. Okay, <laughs> White Brotherhood of, of Seth is going to be happy to do that. So White Brotherhood of Seth on that one. Yeah, it's going to be to do that for some reason. Okay, maybe that's a bit better. Uh, yeah, White Brotherhood of Seth, I think... In fact, no, let me not do that, so give you all the answers. White Brotherhood of Seth, yeah. Um, we can go back if necessary so you can see where those come from. Right, um, what deity in Kadem ancient Mahmat was associated with foreign foreign peoples um, on that side? Okay. Uh, select as many that apply. So that was on that one. Uh, so this was testing a little bit on the Yusabaic. So Mahmat, uh, Egypt. So, uh, any answers in the chat for that one? Right. There's, I'm looking so many answers there. There's a few answers. Um, Owen. Owen, is, Owen has said, um, he said, set. He's gone for answer number three. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we have Judith. She says um, all three. Just the spelling is different. Um, Owen, <laughs> look, I'm scrolling here. So Owen has said now, um, no, that's a different question, sorry. Okay. okay, no problem. So Judith is correct. Well done, Judith. So the answers are all three. So talk, satah, and set. Yeah, so different tones uh, in different languages. So all three. Um, so select as many that apply. That's, that is correct. All three answers are correct. Um, three. So, uh, what antigenic trait do all the presidents since George Washington have in common? Um, so, how do people answer on this one, or just a couple of answers from how people right, answer right. this one? Owen has said, 
all the above uh, Caucasoid mothers, so he's gone for question. What he's gone for answer number one. Answer yeah. number one. Mm -hmm. um, then there's another one that says question, answer to the anarchy. That's the no. Uh, let's not want the answers on this one. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. What he's done, he's got, he's got a section of his own. I better move on and have a look. I've got to scroll. I'm just scrolling down because there's other people on here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. But most of them are putting just the answer, not the answer, but like the the number. The answer like of a number instead of the actual. Yeah, that's so fine. Let's so go with that, let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's just move on from there. So anybody, so anybody, give the answer two, three for for question three. Yeah, see. What have they said? No, because the way they've answered the questions, you, you can't differentiate which which question they're answering. Okay, so um, the antigenic trait. Uh, so we've got all Caucasus mothers. So, um, so they are all Rh negative blood types. So that is what they have in common since George Washington. All Rh negative uh, blood types, obviously from the Pleiadians. Yep. Uh, so answer number four, uh, question number four, excuse me, uh, which of the following, Muthiad Mutatalu, uh, does not have RH negative blood types? Uh, so again, testing Sabaic here, Muthiad Mutatalu is extraterrestrials, and that is what it uh, translates as. Um, so any answers here? I've got all the and Ananaki. Okay, boom. Anybody else? Thank you, Owen. Uh, right, I've got answers here, but they don't say from what questions they're answering, so I can't give them out. Okay. They're, they're just answers, but not relate, they're not saying what they're related to. So. Okay. All right, no problem. So um, so the answer here, uh, unfortunately, I mean, that's not the right answer, but a good try. Um, so all of the above um, RH negative blood types, all of the above yeah, in this regard um, is the correct answer there. Uh, so, uh, question five. Uh, what are the trigger words that will initiate the self-destruction of the Kakasnadu Salau, um, two of which can be found in Revelations uh, chapter 9, verse 11? Have you got any answers here that you can... Uh, well, I've got... I'm going to go with... Owen is... Um, oh, you see, oh, the way Owen's answered the questions are correct. He's put question five and when he's put the answer... Um, the rest of the participants have just put in a number and you can't, can't relate. So Owen has gone with, for question five, he's put hallelujah. He's put answer number four. Answer number four, okay. Um, I can find anybody else. Okay. Uh, All right, no problem, no problem. Um, uh, good, good try, Owen. Um, but the answer is answer three. So, Abaddon and Apollyon, you can find in Revelations chapter nine, verse eleven. And Abu Din is something that was uttered by uh, Osama bin Laden. So, the three words there triggered um, the destruction in the Tel Aviv of the Caucasoid race, given six thousand years um, to. Uh, well, exist, I suppose, uh, by their overlords. Yeah, so they put a time limit on their life cycle of existence. Uh, question six, which was not really a question because I gave you the answer in the question, which was a bit dumb. Um, so let's see. Uh, any answers here for question six? Well, a big shout out to Owen again. Owen has answered that by saying, um, que question six is what? Duff, the Duff gene, Duff. One twelve twenty. Uh, yeah, which was fairly obvious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well done. Um, uh, well done. Well done. I mean, and then the second part of that question: what chromosome is it on? Anybody managed to answer that? I'm looking. I'm looking. 
exactly. They haven't. Nobody answered that question. Okay, so that's on chromosome one. So the correct answer would be the combination would be answer three and uh, answer five. Yep, so chromosome one there. Uh, what two simian species were used in the creation? The word creation means growth, but I suppose the better probably word was interception in the genes of the sands people. Um, any responses on that one? No, well, going with Owen again, Owen has gone for chimpanzee and gorilla. Uh, chimpanzee and gorilla is correct. Well done, Owen. Yes, this is correct. Chimpanzee and gorilla. That was that combination. Uh, second question then is what simian species were used in uh, the creation of Cro-Magnum and Neanderthal men? Um, any responses here? Well, we've got to go with Owen again. And it's put question there is gone a baboon and mandrel. Uh, baboon and mandrel is correct two in a row uh, there for uh, Owen so that is the correct answer baboon and mandrel uh, were used in that regard uh, star constellation what star constellation were the three giant apes sent here from um, any answers there I suppose from, is it from Owen again I'm, I'm just going to have a look see if anybody's oh, oh right oh I've just looked at the bottom. There is some people answered previous questions, but I've seen them too late, so I'm not going back. So Owen has gone for um, Owen. Where are you? Owen has gone for what star constellation? Sirius. Uh, so that is correct. That is correct. So Sirius is the um, star constellation that, yes, they were sent from. Simeon females uh, sent them here from the Orion star, cons uh, Sirius star constellation, or Sirius star system, I should say. Um, what city in Canada were the remains of Trudon found? Okay, last question. Always got an answer, but I'm looking to see if anybody else has an answer. Question 10. Right, nobody's put an answer for question 10 except for Owen. I apologize if I missed the uh, earlier questions from the people who have posted, but Owen is a perfect example of how to answer the questions. Right, Owen's put question 10 Montreal, Canada. Uh, question Montreal um, again good guess um, but it's Alberta Canada so it's answer three maybe the infamous Alberta Canada but I'm sure it's a nice place to um, I've never been there but I'm sure it's a nice place but Alberta Canada um, is where those remains uh, were found very famous um, Alberta obviously order of the Alberts we see you see the name in the uh, name of that particular city okay um, right a little bit different so hopefully we'll get the questions on the right class set up uh, for next time make it a little bit easier but uh, appreciate everybody joining in uh, with that uh, and just doing your best so it doesn't matter um, all the answers can be found in the uh, or were shown in the presentation previously um, so well done for those who sort of remembered uh, the answers there um, on that side of things okay right so we are at let's just close that down oops screen Okay, right, so let's just share the screen back again. Right, okay, so we've done those sets of questions, so let's move forward. So, 
So, um, yeah, so let's get into, um, which is, I suppose, linked uh, from the first part of the harvest, which does go into a little bit of detail around um, the Warner um, and the importance, as I say, of the Warners, obviously, at least it pertains to us um, as a race of people. Um, and as I say, how different. Uh, let's try and get stuff the bottom of Okay, so, um, so yeah, how it pertains to different races um, on the planet that we see today. So, so it's quite important thing because clearly different warners are sent to different races. Um, and as I say, the interlinking or the link obviously takes us from us as the children, obviously here as human beings. And when we say children, obviously it's because they've given birth to us and developed the species or the race as opposed to giving birth insofar as not through the womb of a uh, woman in that regard, but obviously have given birth to um, the species, obviously their characteristics and traits uh, to some degree um, in their earlier stage or earlier form of their own development. And so, um, so just looking at uh, just some of the, the work in here, taken from Psalms the Unknown um, I suppose I understand the importance of you know various different teachers I suppose and leaders who have sacrificed uh, you know a great deal um, to provide us with this information and as a people we know that we're very hard of hearing so remember originally there were 24 races there are only three primary races uh, left um, and you know one of the reasons why there are less races around than there were previous original races as opposed to sub races is because they didn't heed the warnings of those who were sent um, to to aid them in their um, as I say ascension pathway uh, which is obviously different different species uh, here on the uh, planet let me just try and get rid of this screen here just Okay, right. Hopefully you should be able to see that without the uh, bar across the bottom. Okay, right. Now, so, uh, let's just work through this. Um, got about an hour left of class. Let's try and get through um, this with some complex subjects to cover. So, this is uh, Exodus. It says, I've been guided all my life by beings who teach whatever I am asked to make clear. All other physical peoples have ancestors who speak to them all the time in their heads as far back as four generations. My physical body, Malachi Z. Kabina York, and my Ifrit body, Yanan, Yanun, who is the 19th elder, have both Skian and Markabian uh, presences of Zeta Reticuli in Orion's belt. Yeah, Markabians are a form of uh, grey. Some don't even know it was I who helped in their lives and since and have since moved on and have forgotten me. Some people did not follow, could not keep up and stay behind in old schools. Others just fell away, faithful yet not true. Some wanted a holy man, a religious saint. No matter how many times I said, I am not a holy man, I am a teacher, a master teacher. Outside of that, I'm just like you in my human desires. 
I was given many powers and much help to do this great work to redeem and save my own lost Shahasu people. Yet I was betrayed by those I was sent to. I was beaten, imprisoned by the Adamu Salau Adamite race, who knows who I am, by my own given to the race of Mudwaj Mudwaj devils. Excuse me. Many felt I was strange or different. Some felt they could just use me for their needs or abuse me. I knew that all along as well. Yeah, I had. I knew that all along as well. Yeah, I had my assignment in each one's lives, so I did my job for them and moved on. Now, as an elder in mind and now body, I have given all that you need and were lacking, and you truly know who you are and your purpose. I have a supreme confidence in our staff ancestors, Farah overseers, and Morozaku providers, guidance and protection on this journey of life as. Now, uh, most Batu or Sabians or that. Now you decide. So, oftentimes when we're dealing with um, our stuff, uh, say it's made to seem strange, almost uh, supernatural, because of by way of the television, um, you know what's been communicated and what's been conveyed, and because of the particularly with organised religion, it's been around for a long time. That's accepted in whatever form it's given um, and the way it's even described, even though there's no evidence or proof. But uh, predominantly, any of the stories that they've, they've delivered um, are actually true, or the people ever existed um, in life. And so, from the Garden of Eden to, to Noah's Ark, so on and so forth, no proof. When you come along and you present an alternative option, which is not part of their multiple choices, all of a sudden, when we didn't ask for proof of, ask for the same proof and tests for the monotheistic religion and the deities of those religions, now when it comes to our own stuff, um, we want proof. You understand? Um, and so the power of them communicating through or to or um, by way of us uh, becomes difficult, hard of hearing particularly as I say when the person looks like us we're happy sometimes to give it up to um, white or even light skin or red skin individuals um, but when it comes to our own whose freckles are uh, a lot closer it becomes very difficult and very hard of hearing um, as a people you understand? or even when we do listen um, it would appear that uh, we want to pick and choose which bits you want to apply, understood? And obviously that doesn't work in a solution, in a solution that is designed to be holistic, you know, in its, um, in its fix, and or its healing, so to speak. So, uh, it's important to understand what are physical ethers. So, the way in which races or planetary nations obviously are classified in the nation system because, let's say, they have been set or placed in a way where they interact, I suppose, uh, communicate or exist um, or interact with a certain registry uh, frequency. So if you think about the sort of devices in your home or house or whatever, they're designed to exist within a certain frequency range as not to interfere with each other. So your television would operate on, on uh, one set of channels or frequencies um, as designed not to interfere with the radio or your router and obviously there are certain conventions uh, which are set up when people are producing or manufacturing certain types of equipment where they have to certain regulations exist or operate in those frequency ranges so they don't interfere with each other and in a similar way um, these, the physical ethers act in the same way for races and obviously the Nataru or Panataru um, on Muzaku um, obviously exist within certain frequency ranges and therefore allow their children to be in tune with that frequency. So Wusabat as a um, as a, uh, as an etheric science or some say spiritual science in that regard, which is that helps us to to unify um, as a people. 
is this on a certain frequency range which um refer to actual facts um tone uh and vibrational energies will give you the exact frequency that it exists upon so what you tend to find is when you feel that maybe you're receiving inspiration or knowledge or you're reading and certain things of that nature you are in tune or at certain points in tune or maybe other points out of tune with that frequency see and the key is obviously to stay directly connected trying to eliminate the white noise and um, that's interfering with you receiving that information to, uh, that's coming to you in information so, yeah. and so clearly you see um, planetary nations or races um, they have various different species but within them so in our case we have nine the Dravidians you see there's seven Mangalu uh, three um, and the Kakasu are the females and these have six species so they come from six that pertain to their um, species and the same there is that a unique signature for us to dial in with our family um, spirits and, and so part of the reason why we've been lacking in spiritual power is because we've been putting our energy into nothingness um, or throwing our emotional energy out there but it's not connecting with anything substantial this is like dialing in overstood to um a particular number understood that you're trying to reach um but because we are both if we can physical we are the mobile phone and so we are the phone that allows the connection to take place between the two the physical and the spiritual for lack of a better word the spiritual uh, realms in a sense, which are our salafu uh, exist upon and can obviously make the way then to contact our higher ancestors um uh, uh, Murazaku or the Bardadara. Yep, so here you see uh, from physical ethers, the Nathara speaking, we lodge by way of Khatat al Achachat, physical ethers, and Achat al Achachat, yeah, mental ethers, so say mental there, for each humanoid creature that each are unique in their own way. So, and so are uh, each unique in their own way. So as I say, so within nature, the races are stamped, understood, and vibrate on a certain frequency, which makes us obviously different from uh, one another. So hence why, um, I mean, we see the sort of uh, connection there or connected forces there. Um, Whereas, say, our as a terrestrial representation of the sun, uh, and then we've got um, you know, sort of vast energy fields referred to as a morphogenetic field. You've got um, ancestral energy, um, conscious gases, and you know, our ancestors there in that form once they've transitioned, um, surrounding the planet, and our energy feeds into them, makes them stronger, and and helps them. To, that ascension journey so because obviously at the point of transition which we'll get into maybe a little bit further in this class today you don't want it to end up on the lower etheric registers um, either by way of being fooled or you know maybe personal transition maybe the last thought or thinking it's in a more negative uh, area or sense uh, and can end up in say lower realms of existence uh, where that energy is then being used uh, like an etheric battery uh, for lower forces lower forces remember the science of religion is precisely to do that isn't it precisely to where the um, those forces that um, are the dead forces or death forces that must subsist off of living forces in order to survive so the religion sets you up almost in a sense as I say to be used uh, fodder saved in the sand to be utilized by others for their um, sustenance understood and so the question is yeah well, yeah I think we said it in the last class you know somebody saying they're being saved well the purpose is for being saved is so that it can be used later so the question is well what are you being saved for or to be used for and so in this case it's natural for us to be aligned with our own ancestral energy our energy should be directed out of the physical abode 
to the esoteric abode where our ancestors reside um, and let's say at 7, 8 and 9 ether will always be of our own uh, ancestral uh, bloodlines. So we can see here um, clearly uh, this, the one of the aspects of the spell was you know, um, in the right knowledge series it was taught was, was spiritual ignorance and racial blindness. So racial blindness, not knowing who uh, the evil one is in, in many different forms they may come in and then uh, spiritual ignorance but obviously not knowing how the world around us uh, works but obviously in the there, hereafter, to the thereafter doctrine <coughs> excuse me that obviously is changing in, the sand, in that regard <coughs> excuse me changing um, in that regard changing and so we're getting a better understanding of what is taking place um, in the in the darkness so um, E1 obviously which we know is the world of energy so less than one and the distinction between for simply for simple understanding purposes the world of energy in the sand, uh, and then obviously above one uh, or the first element as they have it it's um, the world of uh, matter or material in the sand. so <clears throat> the differentiation uh, that we see between the two worlds which you see in the percentage symbol or sign so you look at a percentage sign you see as two circles isn't it and a line which represents the diagram um, that we're seeing here percent <clears throat> excuse me in that regard now uh, so we can see the various different um, seeds as they're being referred to as as or physical ethers um, being uh, in most cases dual gender so you both got both male and females within them. when we look as we talked about earlier in the Muadamu or the, Cauc the Caucasoids we see um, the female vibrates higher than the male so she's six e for vibration that's what she can attain but the male's lowest lowest in fact of all the races on the planet vibrating at the five ether uh, level stage so we made the point earlier that when you get into mixing between um the races obviously the Nagarnadu or Negroid race has the ability to move up the whole of the ether levels or scales uh, particularly you know, the men uh, evidence of that is our melanin um, sun heat genes clearly which you know it's a manifestation of that darkness or that blackness set of all light combined understood and so um, we're able to vibrate and control that vibration and connect with all of those ether ranges you understand obviously in in certain understanding that's what having a soul means is that the ability to connect it's not so much whether you can dance to a tune in time. I mean, there may be one aspect of it depending on the music, but uh, it's the ability to interlock with certain frequencies. So we trans, we transverse or we travel up the whole or can vibrate up the whole of the um, ether uh, spectrum. Nothing is beyond this because we came from, we are part of the original of a stood uh, where all this was grown and birthed out of you understand as we express in part acute now excuse me so you can see where dropping your rate down in a sense where you can cut your soul I mean, suppose a soul can be cut off for many reasons you have two the ba'a soul and the rawu soul the rawu soul pertains to the breath the ba'a soul is the uh, expressional being or emotional body in the sand and it's a projection of the, the mental down which gets interpreted at the fourth plane of existence as soul so that's your connection it can be cut off when an individual is not in control of their decision making so somebody's addicted to drugs or addicted to drink or addicted to sex whatever it is if you're not in control of your decision making and you become a slave to your body you can lose that connection just like with the internet or whatever your router it can be restored you understand uh, and put back in in play but they spend their time trying to get you to disconnect so they can take advantage as I say of um, the natural innate energy that's stored uh, within you so I think we can be clear the world of something nothingness um, if you're not clear on these go back to uh, uh, seek out um, the class natural ether energies we go into that in, in a lot of detail any questions I'll move on 
No questions from my side. Um, I can see uh, someone with their hand raised. Owen, um, your hand is raised. So um, what I'm going to do, uh, if you'd like to ask a question, I'm going to unmute uh, your mic. Um, so um, your mic is now unmuted. Do you have a question? Your hand is raised. Can you uh, unmute your mic, Owen, if you have a question? Or lower your hand. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, no, I raised my hand a long time. It was a long time when I raised my hand, but I'm, I'm okay now. I always was, I always what I'm hearing, so I'm fine. Okay, excellent. No All problem. Right, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, so uh, the power of uh, Ramaz symbol. So this is very important um, uh, in this regard. So this is something from naturally the energy, uh, verse 41. It says, In Kadem Mahmat, ancient Egypt or Tamaray, your Salafu ancestors, Musbatus, Sabians in Musabat, we use uh, Ramaz symbol to explain and and example of Alam Sahamat, hidden powers of visible yet invisible bara space. So, um, let me check the word in there, but, uh, but basically, symbolism is used, as I say, to express or show the hidden world because a symbol, as you know, um, is not giving you. Uh, exactly what the thing is it sometimes can allude to something or it represents obviously a greater truth or explanation that sits behind it and as we've expressed you know, 90% of existence is in darkness dark energy obviously and dark um, matter um, in that regard so and some things are say you can't see with your physical eyes or in this physical form at least you can't see with our physical eyes so symbolism and reasoning can be used as say to help us have a better understanding of what is taking place understood now you understand that in space and out space are exactly the same so certain systems that exist say out there in the universe are similar systems that work on a planetary level and there's similar systems that work obviously in the human body and even in our case at a cellular level so we are a universe so hence why you see this kind of opening section is about know thyself or know how the body works because you know you might not be able to travel 93 million miles to see understood um, and study the sun by sitting right in front of it but obviously you can study you know from a distance or you can study your own internal sun in your solar plexus to get a better understanding um, of how the sun works 93 million miles away do you understand obviously in certain instances like now I think they've got a, a rover on Mars haven't they yet searching the planet for various different water deposits well why is water important because where there's water there's life you understand so obviously if the, if the ingredients of life are found then life must be there do you understand so this is again where some aspects of things may be hidden from us but um, by using the power of reasoning and more importantly for us getting into the mind of our ancestors and understanding the symbolism which has been left for us to help us to understand the path that they have walked before us understood in terms of not only living uh, within physical side society but also the ascension journey that we are you know uh, destined to make with our as I say our potential and abilities so <laughs> An interesting one. I put interesting because we're not going to fully explain it. But there was an update um, sent, interesting enough, um, from uh, the mass teacher uh, that came back. And it talked about a certain symbol that was placed at this particular uh, airport, uh, which was open, I think, in the mid-90s. Um, it says there's a symbol in Denver Airport on the floor. It's a symbol telling they're holding Baba Yanana in that state. His symbol is his symbol and also means other Riskians have or has 
worked with them. It's a mark master. So uh, one of the things we have to appreciate is is that um, I mean we don't express it as much as we should do because uh, we changed the way we introduce classes. But it's making the point known that just because we as a people don't always pay attention to who the warner is that is being sent to us. You can bet your bottom bottom dollar that everybody else is paying attention, particularly the more than more than Mukasu is paying attention, even if we're not. And so, and hence why you add um, Cointel Pro, um, the Cat Intelligence Program. We've been talking about the, the recent movie, isn't it? Jesus and, Jesus and the Black Messiah um, that's just come out, which you know, FBI is a political, you know, pseudo political organization, but Cointel Pro. Which was designed to stop the rise of a black messiah as a spiritual agenda. So the question is, well, why are they they're a political organization? They're supposed to be fighting domestic um, domestic crime, whatever the case may be, yeah, on in the shores of America, but they had an esoteric spiritual agenda, J. Edgar Hoover in them. So it's something that's not pointed out and well understood uh, around you know what they was what were they looking for? Somebody has informed them or they had information to what they were looking for or they were expecting something to come or rise up as it pertained to our race, understood? Yeah, that clearly was a threat as they saw it to them. You understand? So, as I say, each race is sent their own warner. Each race is sent their own warnings is something uh, that we have to understand. So here, as I say, it's an interesting building, uh, this, and I suppose it's been known to hold certain symbols. You see certain things here on the floor. Here in this terms of this design. And interesting enough, you see a big uh, statue of... Um, one of our ancestors, you understand, with a, obviously a mask on. Um, yeah, Anupu, you understand, obviously shown in this form. And let's say a Freemasonic symbol um, there to inaugurate um, not part of its opening and the burying, obviously, of a time capsule um, underneath it to inform, um, I suppose, future generations of what we were like as a people in and around that time so there are certain things <clears throat> excuse me going on that if we don't understand the symbols um then we may miss what is being conveyed but they're still there and oftentimes certain things are being shown uh, in plain sight so any questions no further questions from me and no questions here Okay, that's what I had raised. Okay, so um, right, so let's get into the message of uh, Yanun. And so, but recapping that first bit. So, if you don't understand physical ethers in terms of the way in which races are structured, they're structured to vibrate on a certain frequency, and obviously, the whole purpose is to help them. Um, but it means that they can receive messages as well as feed back messages from their um, DNA, from their genes and from their other esoteric aspects of, of self without interference from others. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and people trying to manipulate um, those messages or interfere um, with the design. This is the natural order of things. Why is it important or relevant uh, to some degree is that basically... That is showing you that what you use as a word called religion in its, I suppose, true meaning of the sense is about that connection. It's about staying connected with your overlords or ancestors who will assist you to walk the evolutionary path or the growth path that they have already walked either hundreds of thousands, millions, or in some cases, trillions of years before. And so therefore, know exactly, um, in our case, what it takes to transition from being um, part etheric and uh, physical being, you know, saying, to make that transition um, either prior or within, uh, within life or post um, life, so life after life scenario um, to appear us, as I say, for um, greater forms of existence as our potential 
um, allows. Now, um, the individual named Baba Yananan, um, so the Ifrit part in Dr. Malakazi, York, talked about a particular vision. I'm going to walk through this uh, vision um, in terms of this message uh, and why the book is called that. So it says, I'm I'm asleep in darkness in my cell. So it's been in prison since May 8, 2002. Um, he says, I hear, I sure, awake. You're not an awake. My first feeling is that it's from the outside of my cell. An officer, an officer, yeah, I'm behind two doors sleeping. I sit up and try and see in the darkness, nothing. I lay back down. Again, I hear, awake, you're not an awake. It's time, it's t- it is time. I sit up to look and at my watch and it's 2.30 a.m. So I wash my face, sit on the bed, relax and close my eyes. The voice is not one, yet in harmony. Three voices together. Yananan and and Zor and Hu and Thor and Thor Yananan. Warn, warn. Now I'm I'm aware that these are Muahahu, Ethereans. I remember from times past, I keep my eyes closed and listen. Panen kawun pa balach lehehum. This is a message for them. I then heard chanting. It rose and fell in tone. Sounds as free leads were followed by many others. I can't make out what is being chanted. It seems the second voice is far off from the free in harmony, which is near. I want to open my eyes, but I felt if I did, it may go away again. So I sat and listened to the song being chanted. Then the free in one voice said, Yananan, open your eyes. Wapuyi, now Musbatia, words in the air. They shined gold and it felt. I first felt it was a yellow light, yet it was not. Then an orange light and it was not. I thought it as an amber fire. That was not it. The letters formed in rows, letter after letter, from my left to my right and became words. I begin to realize these shining gold words were the song they chanted. Then I begin to sing along with the voice that was far off, repeating with the free who were chanting the gold words. And this went on. I don't know how it's, I don't know exactly how long this occurred. I woke up at the sound from outside movement. It was morning. I knew it was not a dream. I was compelled to take pen in hand and write the golden words which I could see repeated in my mind's eye. When my hand tired, I just stopped. Later, I was compelled to take the pen again until I finished. The song was sung. The chant was chanted. I remember three voices singing. This is Parbalah, the message for them. So I called these the message. I still see the golden glowing words in my mind. I sent them to you after I translated and transliterated them. And with... The Wapik script, as I sent them in gold, I know this will happen, to be read and chanted. So, I mean, you can take this how you wish to, but it was an important message or that was being conveyed as uh, recalled in relation to um, a vision received and four things were conveyed, which we're going to get into um, in, in a second. Yeah, but before we get into that, we need to understand some aspects of science about who we are um, and how we're connected um, as individuals, but also collectively um, by race, understood. Yeah, so let's go through a few of these questions from this update um, taken in 2016. So, so the next generation can have their Sahamat powers. So this is obviously talking about us being gifted back these our higher faculties being a complete being again. 360 mastery of the physical, 360 mastery of the uh, spiritual or esoteric and or etheric. So being complete, full hundred percent faculties again. Nathar or Natir Ta Ten. They're complete with our higher um, aspects of who we are. And what's the answer? It says, not so easy. You see, you have in you four generations of people from both sides. 
the mother and father and back from there. So it will take much more than just reading the actual facts I presented. It will take, as was stated, you must be born again. By that I mean the beast made it a plot or plan to get into our DNA, our chromosomes, our genes, our blood, to give us theirs. And this also affects our being, the, our being divine. You see, some come back to Sabat or Wunawap and that the devil genes pulls them back into his world. Could be a new mate or addiction or doubt. This happens in their DNA, which is attracted by the Kakasu DNA in their generations from race mixings. Yeah? So we see, as we talked about earlier, the throwing off of the, the frequency or the, uh, the alignment with uh, those frequencies can come. One of the ways it can come, obviously, is by um, the intermixing in our genes, which obviously was forcibly happened um, in the, uh, the 400 years so-called kidnapping or so-called slave trade, I should say, but real kid, really a kidnapping. Um, and today, we find ourselves, obviously, if living particularly in the Western Hemisphere, uh, this can be choices, this can be um, scenarios whereby um, there's a lot of programming that takes place to kind of promote this. But so people think it's um, love and different things, attraction and so on and so forth, but maybe not have analyzed, well, You've been programmed from a young age, in the sense, and so you know why do we say fall in love if it's progressive? Understand <laughs> why are we saying fall? You should be rise in love, correct? If it's progressive, if these these choices are progressive, or are they uh, achieving one thing but at the detriment of of something else? So, seventeen says, does this relate to the polarity of positive blood types and negative blood types? A, yes, that's part of it. <coughs> Excuse me. In the sense of there being a reaction. You cause one thing to take place with you and something else takes place in you. That is a divine rule. Yet no, mass prayers or chanting can bring about change. Entanglement is called. The people you have concentrating on one subject, person or result, the more powerful it come, becomes, the stronger the result. So this is... Um, something that obviously we have to get uh, obviously a better understanding of if you don't already so we talk about quantum entanglement uh, oftentimes and this is obviously um, the, the interconnectivity between uh, particles so this is showing that um, depending on who you look at what definition but this is showing clearly that Particles, when you start dealing in the quantum world or the world of nothingness, the rules of physics um, basically, to some degree, are thrown out of the window. Understood? And when you're dealing with entanglement, this is the idea that basically a particle in one location that can be separated, as I say, by it could be millions, if not trillions, of light years in separation, that when you basically affect that particle, the, its corresponding particle will change or move in correlation with it at exactly the same time, irrespective of distance and certain or time and space that separates uh, this in that regard. So what's being expressed here is the power that basically we have as individuals, but as a species, that if we focus our attention and our mental energy on um, one purpose, we can cause it to connect. It's a natural ability um, within us. As I say in uh, the book Emotional Energy, it says um, the uh, Nuwapian or Sabian is analogous to the way air is the carrier of sound. You understand? So analogous meaning it can be compared to the way air is a medium for sound. So we can carry positive energy or negative energy uh, around us. We tend to do the, the latter more than the, the former. And so in that regard, and so this is saying that this is an innate ability uh, within us. And so the chanting at set periods or set period times helps us not only to align individually, but whatever the purpose is that's being expressed within the request or, or prayer, for people to for maybe lack of a better word, or whatever the chant is saying can cause that focus and whatever we're seeking to achieve, obviously, um, 
intensifies the more we do it, yeah, um, together at certain per se points in time. So, as I say, in Parbalag, three, uh, four things were given. So, um, they're all books, or, or it could be said, but uh, they're to be chanted, sung, you understand, in the Misbatia language, understood. And so, this is really helping the individual, as well as the race, uh, to realign. So, Parsawab, uh, or the first one, Parsawab, Bupatarak, some monocle may be familiar with, the truth and the way. And so, this is a song, obviously, which is talking about the restoration or um, of the and thanking um, our ancestors for the guidance, you understand, which is part Iraq, the way. So we're being re given back our culture again, understood, and a combination of that way. Obviously, because it was for, for a nation of people, if you look at it on a physical side, you need a culture, a language, and a land, isn't it, to be a proper nation? Obviously, we had a land, it was taken, it will be got back again at a certain point in the future or rebuilt elsewhere. Tamaray, Patar, Earth, uh, Maye, Water, Raye for the Sun, three principles for life. Wherever we are, Tamaray is, in the sand, as a people. So that will be rebuilt. Nation, Excuse me. We establish or we declare to to the world uh, of a, obviously our sovereignty. Excuse me. In nineteen ninety two into nineteen ninety three, and declare that to the world. Obviously, the issue is around recognition, which is another story for another day, or whether people accept that without you necessarily um, joining. You know their system of recognition, i.e., by way of the United Nations or get another country um, to endorse you, so that basically what you have in terms of um, procedures is recognised within their international system. Be it travelling to another country, crossing borders, you know, using a passport and things of that nature. Understood. And then the next bit is a language and a culture. So basically. Part Iraq is giving us back that culture, you know, saying giving us back um, not just it's in religion, you were given rules to follow or laws as they would have it as, not rules, excuse me, they were given laws to follow but lack understanding of the context of why these laws are in place. So thou shall not kill, well, what does it, they say thou shall not kill, but then the Israelite tribes went out taking people out, so, and killing people and were commanded to do so. So did that law not apply to them? And when does it apply to? What's the context of this? Because if somebody gets raped, um, if somebody gets raped and, you know, they have a child or whatever, they carry a child in their womb, is it wrong to kill that child? You know if the child arose from an unnatural act, in an unnatural sexual act, he in a sexual act, violent sexual act, you understand? Is it wrong uh, for the, to kill the child in that instance? It raised some interesting questions. So you went through a process of, let's say, understanding um, so, or mastering those religious degrees, um, then having it pulled away from you because obviously deities in that sense don't have laws uh, in that regard they 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 make the con they make the decision and they feel the consequences of those decisions that they take now the reality is is that we went from a place of rule, uh, laws under religion you understand and then obviously as it pertained to then we have no rules is that under right knowledge but then now you understand the context as you're building a society again of why we have certain rules as opposed to laws in place understand, as it pertains to uh, harmonious living understand, amongst each other and if there are behaviours or things which go against that harmony then there are consequences to try and steer a person or a group of people back to that behaviour or if not you remove them from your environment so they, affect, they don't affect um, 
you know, uh, the sanctity of the whole, you understand, or the group, so to speak. So part of Iraq is giving us that on many different subjects. So setting the record straight, but also giving us back uh, a way to live, a way to align ourselves, to be in the image and light after lightness as the children of the Natharu to, um, as I say, fulfill that journey and fulfill one's potential and understand what and what is not perfection because that's what all should be um, striving for. So a song provided for us as part of our chance till done today um, at the nine, three and nine uh, numbers. Uh, a further book um, was given, as I say, um, for us, as I say, to remember who we are and where we, and who, importantly, who we're not and where we came from, and I said, in uh, the book of memory. In a sense, this was part of or conveying this vision as it, as it was expressed. So he received and gave us the translation, the transliteration, in the sense of the uh, Sabbatic words in English, but um, the transliteration and then the actual text itself, and how it was originally conveyed. So one obviously would learn, in a sense, obviously get to, to memorize these, chant them will see speak them but also learn how to read it in the script understand what's how to do the pronunciation in transliteration to eventually when you're reciting in your own language you would develop that understanding from an english not always having to translate uh, so on and so forth you understand and so this is the message i say that was being conveyed the other book um was the book of time so um again Providing it's showing there what time is and what time is not, there's a lack of understanding of of time, particularly obviously as it relates to um, the I suppose the misunderstanding that has been conveyed around the simple concept of a clock, having clockwise and anti-clockwise, which has got nothing to do with the real meaning of time, which is one of the third parts of existence, you know, along with space matter space and matter so these three are inseparable space matter and time are necessary in the formulation um of existence in the sense when you reverse the word time you get the word emit you understand so there are things about uh, this concept that we need to understand even our language if you remember a book that was released is referred to as the language of time you understand so the then now then principle uh, it's very important because all time is really now but we have a, multiple thens of the past uh, and then multiple thens obviously of the uh, future and obviously our answers have the ability to go back and forth um, in time as do we uh, dormant understood so the other book then that was conveyed was the book of divine love understood and again expression expression of the of this type of love and then um, you know where it comes from some understanding of it because the word love is certainly uh, misused um, in English and you have different forms of love in 12 not going into all those uh, right now but love of one's child for example um, you know love of one's whatever mate or partner uh, you know these are different types of, of love but the reality is is that you know um, let's be honest most of us we, we only really love ourselves and even the people think they don't um, you know, someone asks you well, why do you love your partner or whatever and, you know, when you hear the answers well she cooks me a great meal or she really takes care of me or you know, saying, she, you know, saying, she, she, when I speak she really understands she really helps me with uh, some of the problems that I'm facing she makes me happy boom 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 every reason I just gave the word me was in there you understand so who do you really love <laughs> do you love yourself or do you love um, do you really love others so it becomes a, an interesting subject and some people use the word love word 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 and then they don't they don't do their actions don't back up the words you understand so they say love but then do some yeah, you know, I was going to say something else there, but some dastardly behaviour understood um, that doesn't match up with the words. So saying one thing and doing something else is also this word gets misused, and then we've got the word fall in love. So this different type of love here, this ashok, 
is a different type of love, a higher form or the highest form of love. Um, and we think about, you know, entities or, or beings that partner through the sun. And, you know, it does its job, irrespective of whether human beings acknowledge its existence or not. You understand? And so it shines, it provides sustenance. You know, if it wasn't there, we would soon feel the effects of no sun with all life as we know it being uh, gone uh, within a matter of weeks, not even months, within a matter of weeks um, uh, as we know it. Well, certainly our life form would not exist without the sun. So 1% of the heat generated from the sun is necessary just to power um, the various different systems, as I say, on uh, this planet. Understand? So the reality is that divine love is, you understand, is, is higher. You know, it's doing it without, you know, um, uh, with pure intentions, you understand, and not um, having ulterior motives and things of that nature. Imagine if one of us was the sun, and you know, certain people was was not acknowledging, yeah, you know, uh, what the work that we was putting in and providing, you know, as I say, in some place on the planet, they'd be in total darkness. So as a result of our our maybe lower mindset in that regard. So you can see, in terms of our evolutionary or growth journey or ascension pathway, that basically there are certain things you have to go through because when you get into, into these higher positions you can't have that mindset you can't have that selfish mindset you know what I mean well I don't want to do this no more and then walk away some people do something for two weeks they leave it uh, you know what I mean and go away what about the, the understated effort and <clears throat> you know where you're just doing doing things day in day out for years like with a mother who raises a, a you know a, a a son or father who raises they raise their family you understand yeah at a certain level yeah if they're doing the job a certain way it, there's no there's not always a material payback isn't it you have to do it because it has to be done you understand it's your child have to be fed you have to get up um you know early in the morning when they're young etc etc and guide them through um you know for them to turn around when they get to a certain age to express their godship and disrespect in some instances not all but in some instances turn around and disrespect for you They're only later that line to come back and say hey i realized damn you know, how i flex i was wrong when they become a parent and see how difficult it is and why you said certain things so on and so forth so you know these are the challenges of, of our species which are set and so divine love or understanding of that higher <clears throat> love and what it really means um, in the context of um, us as a, as individuals and what we must do for a race I think Muhammad Ali said service to others is the rent you pay for your life here on earth well I mean that's, it's a very interesting concept and you cannot reach the heights of heights or fulfill your potential without understanding service to others and you see that the master teacher insofar as being a teacher is in service or almost enslaved to us as far as having a mission to fulfill uh, and to get out and obviously that love for us is continually obviously tested but there's a mission to be achieved which can't fail do you understand what I'm saying there's a bigger picture at all times which one has to have um, understanding for even though in the same we can get tested pulled one way different things different priorities in this uh, life that we live but we have to maintain that ascension focus and those who don't um, will fall by the wayside those who do obviously will inherit um, all the benefits that come with the tests that have been placed in, in front of us uh, to make it back home um, to be with our ancestors once again any questions I saw a hand raised I thought I saw a hand raised yeah it was me can you hear me yeah go ahead go ahead yeah I've got that book Parazal the message yeah mm -hmm. right so um, do do I read it with the uh, the prayers? You know, like the nine a.m., three three p.m., nine p.m., nine p.m. prayers. How do I read this book now? Like, do I just read it for the sake of remembering, or do I read it like it's a prayer as with with all the the rest of the prayer and chants? How do how do I, you know, because while you was breaking down. The different books like you know the truth from the way the book of memory mm. the book of time the book of divine love i thought i've got that book you mm. know when you buy a book 
and then indeed, read indeed. a bit of it, you put it down. Right. You know, so I picked it up now, dug it back out now because you're you're talking about it. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, so how do I implement this book in my life? Like, do I just read it, get into the habit of reading it just so it keeps me online, you know, like on the right path? How do I, I mean, do I read it like it's a prayer, like all the rest of the other prayers and chants? Okay, got your question, got your question. So um, with the current chants, uh, Pasawabu Patarak is in the current chant. So it's one of the... Um, one was, I suppose, already integrated um, within the chant system, so to speak. You understand, and that is a that is a song. In that way, sung, I suppose, as opposed to to chanted. I mean, uh, uh, probably my my uh, uh, my lack of Stevie Wonder voice, but you know, something like Penenza Fa Kawun Pasawabu Patarak. So that's a song, you understand? Or it's done in a song type um, fashion, it's sung as opposed to being chanted. The other books, as you rightly say, are to be memorized, and, and, and certainly members of the um, Madrasu uh, Tasharak. Um, one of the amazing things is that some of the, the youngsters were, were really learning this off by heart so I think the the intention really should be to try and seek to get this memorized off by heart understood with full understanding from English to um, the Sabaic to be able to read in the Sabaic script as well and then you would incorporate that as and when needed you understand so um, it could be part of your your ritual or you may say recite it periodically as part of that so yes it should be chanted it can be read clearly for understanding and wisdom so to speak but yes you'd want to get it to be able to chant it um, eventually in tones having memorized it um, in the various different forms so it is just another way um, as a form of uh esoteric or, or spiritual press up so to speak um, to help your inner being and help it to be aligned and, and help you with your uh, ascension journey so if you've got it yeah you can you can add it to um, your ritual as and when you feel needed you're not going to go to some burning hell if you don't do it but obviously there are benefits um, to doing so like a person may stay fit or stay on a fitness regime some people do it day to day and maintain a level of fitness throughout their life others you know what I mean they, they go from extremes in the sense so overweight then fit overweight so on and so forth so obviously an even path even kill is much better and what happens is obviously you start to hear the he talks about the three in one or the three tones in one as you, you saw from the vision well the individual start to experience a higher level of vibration in their voice uh, once they start to articulate these uh, songs or chants um, in that way you can feel the vibration raising uh, and that's some of that part is evidence in, in, in the way you speak or the vibration that gets generated uh, once you chant these particular books so it's just another tool that's been added uh, to those to help you with your spiritual aerobics uh, so to speak okay I hope that answers your question yeah, can I just say something? Go ahead, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. So now I know what I can be doing because I'm I'm a type of person I use um, auto suggestions. You know, like if there's something I want to manifest for myself, mm-hmm. I will use auto. Oh, we, we can call it affirmations. You know, right. affirmations. But I use my phone as a tool to record myself speaking about something I want to manifest. Mm. So I am going to use this book now, Parasal, the message. Read from it, you know, read the various pages, Mm. subject, and um, record myself reading it. Because what I do is when I go to bed now, I, I I play what I've recorded while I drift up into that sleep mode because I know it gets embedded in the subconscious eventually while I'm asleep. So 
That's it's helpful. This book's going to be a helpful tool. I've had, I've had the book a long time, but like most things, we buy books and we read them and put them down and read another book. But I need to be going back to the books which I will put down. You see, so this to me, this is just an encouragement. I know what to do now with this book. For me to know, to, I can basically what this book is telling me about time, memory, and everything else. I can basically talk talk it into my subconscious you know what even when i'm sleeping i mean so i just wanted to uh yeah no uh, appreciate appreciate that so yeah i mean and that's how you should do it i think obviously if you're playing stuff to your subconscious make sure you play at different times of the day so because obviously if you just play it when if you play it when you're sleeping what can happen is is that um, you train your mind to associate your tone with sleep in the sense so you need to vary the times of day obviously when you play it um, as long as you get a good night's sleep I'm not saying to say you can't yeah, get yeah. sound but make sure more important get a good night's sleep you understand so as long as that's calming for you uh, yeah. so on and so forth then then obviously that approach is, yeah. is fine but yeah it's, it's all all of it is just designed to help you stay in tune yeah. so if that keeps you on that thing and obviously at a certain point remember as you start to tune into that frequency some of the things or the, the basic understanding of it, you will derive more meaning from what's being expressed. You understand? Because obviously it, it reads one way in English, correct? Yeah. But then in uh, Sabaic, it's going to have a different, it's going to have a higher meaning to it because we've had to translate it, change it. You understand? So obviously it's yeah. fuller understanding or what we should aim for is to understand it in the language because that's what they gave it to yeah. him in. Yeah. You understand? So, yeah. and then it was translated for us. Um, so we want to get to the point where it was originally conveyed to understand its and feel its full, full meaning. You understand? Yeah. So yeah, your approach is is um, yeah definitely. We, yeah. we we as a point of who we are as Muspato or Sabians, we want to master these books. We got a master teacher, so yeah. as master students, we want to master. Uh, yeah. these things and then add them to our repertoire of um, skills and abilities that, that we have yeah because um, what I wanted to say is because it's when I go to bed at night and I've recorded certain things as an affirmation I'll have the thing playing because I've got I've got some I've got an headband which is like headphones and whatever I'm listening to is on a very low volume enough for me to hear it but not to disturb me so I can't go to sleep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Understood. But my subconscious mind is hearing it. You know what I mean? Because the subconscious is always working for us. Whereas the conscious, it just it goes to sleep after a while. So yeah as I say as long as, long as, as, long as, as, long as you're getting a good night's sleep but you're yeah, yeah, bed yeah. and as I say you don't want to program um, your your brain to think okay when I hear that voice or that tone yeah, that yeah. means sleep you understand so you have to also play at different times of the day to avoid yeah yeah, yeah so, that's, so that's so that's so that's fine okay yeah, well, alright uh, yeah, well, thank you All right, no no problem appreciate that question so um, so how does this relate to animism uh, some good questions that are raised and some points there raised so this is again following this update where it says okay Animists, we're interested in the. Remember, we are. Animism is loosely our, our way of life, isn't it? Our religion, the word uh, za'am is um, the Sabaic word of saying religion. It means really opinion, that's what it translates um, to. But our way of life as animists. Um, it says you must understand that the basis of an animist is to what? To know and accept that everything is based on vibrations. Yeah, this we this we understand. Everything's vibrating. Um, as opposed to things just being material objects. We look at things and we determine its polarity and vibrational level. And as I've stated, everything has a resonant frequency. So an animist live by an ethereal found rather that ethereal foundation rather than a material foundation foundation world of density you are now in a three dimensional or third density from one to three you seem to live by one solid two liquid three gas or one blue two yellow three red that are on this side which we just showed you the diagram previously the world of 
matter. Yeah. Nine dimensions, each race can only raise up from one to their own peak. Yes, which we saw on the diagram. Yes, the Nagarnado or Negroids can vibrate across the whole of the spectrum. Other races only part because they only they don't have the same apparatus of as we do. And obviously at a certain point we gave birth to, to all others. All others came from the original. Hence why remember in part one, I think it was a part two of this class, we revisited actual facts, the history, isn't it? And we talked about planetary nations, understood? Now, what was we referred to as? Well, we were referred to as the all nation, remember, because we were the manifestation of the universe here on Earth, you understand, in terms of our abilities and what we represented terrestrially, you understand? So we are known as the all nation, which is another one of our um, titles and what that represents. And all, obviously, races uh, or planetary nations came out of the original which is us so called kakasu from one to six we explained that earlier that is perfection for them no higher for their males yeah in terms of them stopping at five yeah their females can be taken higher transition between densities become possible for collective groups as well now again we say in part one and two we kind of was, was expressing this point as well where there's a lot of confusion around race and there are more because our genes have been scrambled and spread in so many different areas um more actually sit on what we'd be considered to be the black side of things or have these inherent abilities because at some point within their four generations or them they've had interaction with our dominant genes or genetics so they have these abilities but their owners understand remember we've been brain dirtied they've been brainwashed away from their original history and truth etc um, and so consider themselves in certain instances the tele eye vision cinema so on and so forth the media considers them to be superior and that's what you see in terms of the mind of that um, 13 year old uh Caucasian male this is because of that DUF 1220 gene this is what we see and permeate it um, maybe unnaturally throughout the world so the reality is I say most sit on the spectrum of the, the whole in terms of transformation um, but because of racism it will block them from thinking they're a part of that because most people let's be honest majority want to be white or part of the white race even though they don't accept them uh, but this clearly is um, against the evolutionary path in terms of the way the planet is going um, and you know where we as, as races or planetary nations here on earth should be aspiring to, to go to so listen to that it says a Nagara can be pulled down to lower levels and become six ethric beings lost of their soul Lust is the stronger attraction because it's mental effect. The brain and what it puts out and can become an addiction. While on the other side, it's the source of birth and physical life. So we understand, for example, that um, sex, which is associated with six and, and, and physical power, the more sex, the more birth, the more birth, the more death. You understand? So us being born in or the light of life switched on in the darkness we know is temporary isn't it that life is a, is a burning process so obviously sex is necessary the um desire around it is all part of the human experience but overly um indulging in sexual activity particularly when if you're on the bottom of the ladder so to speak because obviously for as much pleasure there must be a uh, balancement of uh, pain and children. Yes, uh, there's, when there's children, there's always, they say hope or maybe prospects, maybe a better, but to use our potential uh, for improvement, but they also are a burden if they're had in, at, at wrong times. And you can find yourself obviously in the conditions that we find ourselves in, sometimes sex can be used as an out or a distraction and if not managed well can cause problems isn't it so you know the term ghetto heaven uh, and what that relates to so 
um, when you're on the come up, you have to control some of these forces and urge and use them in the right way. So remember at one time, which doesn't happen today, but women used to take uh, male energy, um, which was negative and turn it positive. You know, the woman is supposed to use the sexual um, power because the man, you know, wants to get into heaven, so to speak, and use it in a way that direct him um, to perform, to work, acts, achieve. You understand? If he's given uh, it too easy or um, gets it too easy or he's given it without the work, then it, it leads to a lack of success. Do you understand? So these things are set in nature as we, I think we spoke about in a previous class. Remember when you do work or exercise or whatever, or you work out, isn't it? The reward is that the brain releases um, certain endorphins, you understand, dopamine, so on and so forth, that feels like a reward, isn't it? And in a similar sense, externally to us, the male and female dynamics uh, work the same way, but we're not working as a matriarchal society is is, is patriarchal dominant understood so um say so feminine is not being allowed i suppose to rise in that sense to fulfill a proper role uh in terms of managing or helping to manage um existence in that way so we have to understand the power within sex strongest power obviously is mental mind which represents nine and obviously physical power uh, represents a uh, sex of more so we can be pulled by down by making poor sexual decisions um, and nature doesn't the rules of nature don't care and so you get somebody pregnant on day, from the first time you had sex you catch AIDS from the first time you had sex and, and the way in which um, what is being promoted in the media right now is, is that the interpretation of nature transforming or bringing the woman back to power in the thereafter doctrine is being expressed as, oh, that means to be sexually explicit. That means um, a lot of these music artists or whatever. I don't know, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not making it about particularly about race uh, per se, but it's the depiction of a lot of these artists now. I don't know if you know, I've, I've seen any of the... Uh, um, black obviously started with the, the kind of white artists going down that road who, who are who are presenting themselves and not wearing a full set of clothing there's not a distinction almost between what is in the bedroom and what it can be worn in some kind of music video or out of the street so the allure of certain things as i say is um thrown out the window now what i'm saying is if it wasn't about lust because you see in some of the more primitive societies people are walking around naked it's not a problem it's not an issue you know some women have got their breasts out men have got their certain their parts out whatever it's not an issue in those primitive cultures where lust is not a problem lust has not permeated you understand the minds of those individuals so it's not an issue in this society in the west obviously uh totally different misuse of the power so on and so forth and as i say the drug dealer is the new superhero the stripper is the new um superhero um uh, for the feminine you understand and the more grimy the more dastardly all things away from in the sun um the where our culture needs to be um moving towards which is why as i say the mass teacher um has been under so much attack was because when we showed you that picture several classes ago when we showed you the picture of the sacred feminine and sacred masculine versus the you know no disrespect but the Nicki, Mas Nicki Minaj's the um uh Cardi B's and so on and so forth I think we, we use uh Megan The Stallion I think was the other one we showed and showed the two pictures alongside each other and you saw the evidence of what Wolstabak creates and what it doesn't if left in the sand to them what their world creates and what it justifies and giving if you if you criticize it because you think well this is not where our culture should be going ah oh, you're slut shaming you're, da, 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 da. you're doing this you understand but this is what we want this is what you want for your daughters you understand when we look at all these other races I, we don't, do, we, do we see an oriental version of Cardi B out there you understand an Indian version of Cardi B out there yeah, in Africa we're seeing we're seeing we're moving it towards in Africa, but we're seeing these types of things. This is what we want for ourselves. 
Yeah. Now, I'm just saying the woman, the female form is beautiful. It should be admired. It should be shown in a certain, but in the context of what's being uh, done in this world. Now, now men are in the same um, scenario and find themselves in that regard. But the, the misuse of sexual power is not a progression uh, for our race. Not that sex is bad, but I say its misuse uh, is, is problematic. Uh, and as I say, uh, represents the lower side of um, the ethic form in the carnal seat, as you can see where the sex organs are located. So, wow. So can we lose the ab our ability to transform back into deities? Yes. Most have already given it up. So, and then what about... And it's about what then, Master Teacher? Answer. There are extreme complexity of vibrations. Everything is vibrating at its own or different rate. As I taught you the keynotes of the body, the planet, and this one universe linked to the omniverse. Yeah, so uh, A major for the body, F major for the planet, um, C major uh, for the universe or cosmos. You must realize this planet is off its original axis, and your body, by things you have done to it, is also off of your frequency or tone. Why you have to pray three times three times that number three for the movement of the planet is rotation to the sun and the moon and how much energy you receive from this movement so one of the things as i say having the palm and thar or the warner is that things are being changed aren't they yeah to adapt and to maximize our ability to transform which is why I mean the brother mentioned about the, the book even that book has been updated Pa Balag is an updated version of the the three separate ones because the tones are changing the language changes to eliminate the white noise to maximise as I say because um, the planet is, is evolving it's moving some of these other um, uh, entities in relation to the planet so therefore um, you need somebody or beings who understand that and convey hey tell them you understand? They need to do this. Now it might come in the form of a new um, prayer, a new chant, uh, language updates, so on and so forth. But that's designed because when, you, when you've got a living doctrine and a living warner, you can answer these. These things can take place. This is what, but when it's dead, when the person's dead, the moment they died, no new things can be added to what they teach. So they want you to the person to die, and then basically none of this stuff can be updated, and then we have to reinterpret, you know, what was left um, behind in our own way. We ain't got that person to say, as when the teacher was amongst us, isn't it? Yes, on the land, you go there, try with, hey, I need clarification on this. Boom, 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 boom. You said da 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 da. Boom, 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 boom. You understand? It was interactive. Uh, with his people understanding getting clarification understood and this was the most important thing why warners are sent um, into this world for this specific uh, and key purpose so it's important that we understand that because clearly we, this is talking about um, there the impact of solar and lu lunar <coughs> excuse me <coughs> solar and lunar biographical excuse me biological um energy that we're receiving um, within this environment which obviously is is supremely important and uh, key to what we're doing I'm going to move through this a little bit quickly um, uh, probably finish give it another sort of 20 minutes half an hour so uh, I'm going to be over the time at the moment um, but yeah so obviously you understand about outformation or the words of outformation and the key is here is that word formation yeah your form is being affected um by energy being received from outside so the definition of sound for us is what we receive from space and beyond it does not just pertain to what a person hears through their ears yeah it is it's the what is received from space and beyond understood yeah and so and how we then manipulate that in a way as i say that affects us well, subconsciously and consciously do you understand with that energy being received we're ignorant towards it then we're not going to take advantage of it it's not going to have the full impact understood hence why 
you know, what's about is eliminating that ignorance, giving you factual information in all different ways. It's just so you're more sensitive, I say, to being able to receive that information and help it to guide you in your daily activities uh, and beyond. So information on Earth, we know it's inner formation beneath the seas, beneath formation. But that word form is key, understood? Uh, as opposed to conform, um, which oftentimes is going against nature's form and the word contra. Now, um, so as I say, we talked about those three elements, isn't that on point? So the sun, uh, the moon, um, and its angular proximity um, to the planet Earth, and obviously how this is driving, um, you understand, this is driving um, or aiding or assisting with our transformation. Those three bowls or points we saw in the previous slide, space, matter, and time. So that triad of um, triad triad pattern the same features in many ways now, 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 numerology is one of our things isn't it as as uh, Muspata or Sabians as, as Nagar and Nadu so numbers mean different things but obviously that triad principle you see it as I say manifesting itself in many different ways and we talked I think on the last uh, session about obviously the rays of the sun carrying or giving isn't it that information which is the same hand position you see on the Ka'a symbol Understood, yeah. You see the famous kind of Egyptian symbol with the person with their hands up uh, raised at right angles. Um, you understand that is the Ka'a symbol that you're seeing there. So we're receiving as well as sending uh, information back out, understood, into the uh, or connected to the mental reservoir. So, um, so we see here, as I say, that connection between information and our information. But listen to this uh, uh, statement here. So it says, in fact, your skin color dictated by your yachasat genes. It's talking about um, vibration. From your outformational ancestors into your information present being. Yeah, heavy statement. Heavy statement. From your outformational ancestors, yeah, outformation into your information present being. And so this is how we're being described and describing what is being what the influence. See, we were directing uh, that outformational energy into God, Allah, Yahweh, and all these different things. Don't do with our ancestry. No power derived. Many of the things that we achieved that we said before was from your own mental fortitude and uh, mental abilities. Because when you put a thought out there, um, yeah, it's, it's energy, isn't it? And so, and so it, you charge it with energy and that relation of polar the thing of polarity in charging that, it attracts things towards it. That's why you might think of an idea or you put a uh, certain emphasis behind that kind of thinking. You start to meet people. Yeah, okay, I was just thinking about this business idea. Oh, I just met somebody on the train who, who does that. You understand? Who Who's into that particular part of business. I just made a new contact just from a conversation on the train. And so the magic of it, because you don't see the the workings of those energies and how they interact with each other, we consider it to be magical. And it is, uh, in a certain instance, why a lot of things don't happen. It's because of power of concentration, which in the previous session I think we did as well. So it's because our concentrating ability is weak. So a concentration is sometimes patience over a long period of time and keeping that focus over a long period of time, understood. So here we see in the weapons, this is determined by power, speed, motion, vibration, frequency and strength of our pigment. So we have, we have been created with the ability to maximize vibration. That is not really unrestricted to us um, if we're right, healthy um, in body and, and mind. But the application of it because of bad information um, is why, as I say, we have not been able to maximize or as a master teacher would say, we're spiritually weak concerned on how that obviously needs to, to change. So, um, this prayer, one of the chants, partner, I think we've shown this before, partner, this shows the interlink, uh, which is important, between our physical self, our uh, spiritual ancestors, you understand, in the form of energy, also as part of our 30 in our bloodstream, but also existing in the spiritual uh, domain as energy understood and then our higher ancestors Parnathar who we perceive uh, or depicted our sons so the sons 
you know, that's 93 million miles away. Uh, a billion, uh, one, one, up to one billion, uh, was a billion suns in our galaxy. Um, so, uh, you know, these are, these are the beings that we're speaking about, you understand? So different, or various different types. So when we visualize um, what we're talking about here, well, Pyrotho is suns, you understand? Your salaf, or your ancestors in your four, four generations. Remember, that memory of that, you understand? Interesting enough, memory we talked about. So that memory of that isn't was wiped out from you. They, they, most people don't even know who their four generations are. And if, if you do, it's piecemeal. Why did we not remember? Why did we not know to keep those records? You understand? Your personal genesis. You understand? Because they've given us a fake genesis. You understand? Which you can't prove those people existed. But your personal genesis is highly important. It's how you manage and how you control the personalities and different uh, energies within you and where they come from who that person interacted with so even if you do a so-called family tree or really family pyramid understood yeah what about the, the the people that they interacted with when they was alive and who they were with comes a lot more difficult to track then because obviously um, if they mixed or when you were created they mixed they were mixing with other people or interacting with other people and then they added their 32 if they kissed you understand so very difficult to, to track and to know who's who hence why obviously these tests and the application of them and who's dedicated towards it so on and so forth well that um says a little bit about doesn't say everything but it says a little bit about intentions intentionality persons are they sincere if they're in this or they do it for show etc etc so what are you up to you know behind closed doors is it is what we up to match predominantly you know what you're showing externally uh, and these are the type of things that we need to be uh, conscious of in our growth in the sand uh, towards perfection so it tells you here about the ancient ones guard us you all from whom birthed our ancestors yes, these ancient ones, and our families from whom are fashioned into soul so from this source you as a source energy where our soul comes from you understand um, from whom were spirits from whom are ether from whom were flesh and blood so it's showing you that the ascension pathway that's been laid out I'm going to say the book uh, tones um, vibrations etc frequencies that part of right remember goes in, I think in, in one of our classes the history we went through that in some detail so if you want to know the context um, that was set about that ascension pathway and how it was left um, then go back and spend some time to go through that how it was left so a certain way because there was a, dis uh, a separation that needed to be done because the, the beings who were too material too physical at that time were affecting the higher realm so they cut off uh, those but left a pathway obviously for us as their children to ascend to these higher heights of um, or energy states and different types and forms of existence um, however we wish to um, experience it for our own uh, uh, growth now the importance as I say of that and we'll go on for probably another 15 minutes if we don't finish um, this will have to be merged into the next um, session that we have um, so it talks about the power of mind unity and we express this but we went really into loads of detail but we were talking about clearly entanglement that was expressed as part of the chanting in Parbalat so we were given a what a song um, that expressed or talked about the gift of Parterak being given away a culture then obviously the power uh, the book of memory the book of divine love and the book of time you understand and how obviously these combinations of three or in this case four but the three in one also to as I say align us um, or it help with the realignment of us say back with uh, if we can history but here in the mental unity we talk about obviously all of this uh, coming from that mental state and this these abilities where we are as a race sharing yes that frequency we're sharing that relationship to the frequency of Musabat and that actually when we come together not only is it um, the ultimate power in terms of mental unity but it forms a, it, it 
uh, provides a form of protection against beings who are dwelling on lower realms. So it really, we are only supposed to dwell on seven, eight, and nine ether stages. You understand? That's always of our own ancestry. Um, but obviously, we have dropped, and Parnathara even themselves do not drop. We talk about um, ethers is one level. When we talk about um, <clears throat> dimensions, they don't go below four, which is the mental. So you have to raise up to meet them at that particular level. Not so they won't get caught up in physical existence, which is which can be tough. You understand? Because your, your your mind saying one thing, your body wants to do something else and go and manage the two, two things your mind do what tend to you or even ancestors within your body I should say are whispering in a certain or conveying or communicating to you and tell you the right things to do They're the agreeable ones the more disagreeable ones who more physical want to lean towards uh, using you to fulfill their desires are going to send you down paths which keep you much more material do you understand what I'm saying so your your pathway of what you want to achieve out of this life you know, has to be understood and that focus um, there so there are powers in relation to um, the use of the mind or us connecting uh, with the mental um, and using the power of our soul to do that so 158 says your etheric orb of energy of this dimension melts into another dimension by way of a wormhole so there is a merging that needs to take place isn't it which is talking about that three in one um, you understand the real us the etheric double you understand the, the mental all becoming one vibrating in sync in one under our back under our control and obviously the role that we have to play as those in the know um, to perfect our abilities and powers as well is to pull our ancestral energy out of those lower realms where they're being used as I say etheric batteries um, for those lower life forms and pull that energy out so it only as I say is feeding into uh, forces that relate to our ancestry yet yeah, the, the software program or etheric software program is called Ray uh, Ha Achet it's in Ray Ha Achet Ray Ha Achet program is to realign as I say our um, etheric or ancestral energy so it points towards um, uh, the, the places where our ancestors reside in San, and it's not being used for any other race other than their own 159 so meaning you exist everywhere as multiverse omniverse as etheric beings in the sand so these qualities um, or as I say the fact that we exist in, in all places at all times is because we have a peace or we are linked to Papa Ut, you understand? Or we are the, um, for lack of a better word, the cells of, of Papa Ut that are recording um, existence through our eyes, you understand? Now, 160, this is within your potential to activate once you realize your mental powers in true life as most battle Sabians and reactivate the repetition in memory of your true powers. So it's not just what we talked about earlier. Uh, I mean, I think I asked some good questions there. So it is about, you understand, uh, committing certain things to memory, mastering it, you understand? So, you know, I'm, no, no one's, uh, you understand? Okay, so can you get to a point where you do it without the paper, without the book, you understand? Because obviously at that level it becomes a different part of your being and not just to recite as well actually to to understand you know what I mean to feel it emotionally in the language it's going to take work you know what I'm but it's the repetition the consistency of it um, can activate certain things tones are very important as I say you know it's like dialing a telephone number um, you know what I'm and one of the things about I say when you because it, the even the Sabian pathway has a certain level so you start off as a Sabian man or whatever the case may be or sacred feminine or Sabian woman I remember you're both being asked to then join the various different uh, Masonic houses as we have them uh, today and that is done to develop certain other qualities and abilities um, within you one of the prerequisites um, is being able to have a good memory and to retain uh, information 
and it's part of that so oftentimes because of the way technology is convenience and so on and so forth we allow our memory um, to lapse a little bit you think about back in the day you, used to, you probably had you know memorised how many different telephone numbers of key people um, that you kind of interacted with on a daily basis now today because you've got to press two buttons or you know you can speak into your phone and say to the person or whatever that you'd be stuck you know what I mean for your mum's phone number certain people's phone number you don't even know again because you've relied on technology and so our memory when is it being tested then you know, all this technology, which is a good thing, but at the same time, how yeah, do we stretch and test our mental powers and send out our powers of memory? So it's important to keep uh, utilizing and, and testing that and to take it to another level when no one's watching. So when no one's watching, memorize it. You know, the 99 deities, they should memorize. And you know, so these are all things that uh, you know start to make the culture a lived experience, not just something. Um, that you, you, you put on at certain points in the day and take off at others. 161. You are the source of this universe ether. Listen to this now. Source of it. Because then, yeah, because of our link, <coughs> excuse me, to the brain, excuse me, by way of our brain, in certain natural ether energy, um, which we have, the way in which we're able to utilize or convert um, brain uh Newt or brain seeds and starting to convert them in different forms to manifest themselves in different ways because ether is say, sensitive to the environments that it finds itself in. Now it says you are the source of this universe ether and its sahamat powers in your brain to melt down to your heart lungs located to the centers of universal orbs called true stars and suns. This is why it is the akal mind, the man blood, a maya fluid breath of Waju and Wajudan existence. 162. So must battle Sabians. Until we all become one mind, we give power to adverse forces of unnatural Satu Achach, six ether energies to control us and our Hayat lives. Hayat uh, lives. In the sense so as we touched upon earlier this control and this is one of the things remember we, we mentioned this a few times in this class about need and saying remember the master said God cannot be God um, and be in need because the moment God is in need the God, God is no longer God and that was a kind of pseudonym or a comparative way of saying when we now pull that into what's about that if we're in need yeah that's a problem for us as a race if we're in need, it's a problem for us as individuals. You understand? Because at one time, we relied on each other and we relied on on, on nature, yeah? natural nature, to provide everything. We didn't have to go externally to anybody else. But you know, in this society, the Caucasus has put himself in between nature and it's that its ability to provide for us because we have to then go through him and he becomes our God. Yeah, with the power to close supermarkets, with the power to lock down society. You understand? And then you feel like, well, boy, I can't do this, I can't do that. Have people rush rushing out to get toilet paper. You understand? Or feel that they need to get toilet paper. Well, you understand where, you know, you can wash your behind, so to speak, uh, by using other means that doesn't necessarily always require paper. You understand? Which, you know, there's another issue uh, how those things pertain to the environment another thing that at this particular time we're not really concerned ourselves about but should be so 166 we use his spirit forces we feed him by our lack of cooperation with each other as other races do 161 we hate one another as it was said Zazatu women you gave me yeah so in their bible story remember he blamed the woman Adam or more that the Adam in that bible he blamed the woman the woman you gave me caused me to do that and sound like a, a bump yeah 168 in our case it is people I have to deal with or live with never me always others this is his adverse nature not our own so this is something you can talk about love and unity it has to be worked on constantly it has to be worked on constantly there's people that you like don't like but yet when you're in your workplace you're able to work with people that you don't like and you still get things done when there's no money involved, all of a sudden now we don't want to 
we're struggling now to work with the unity because there's no money involved. Think about the power of that money, that last aspect of the spell. Why do you work with others and tolerate them? Boom, 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 boom in your job because you're being paid. But now, when your soul depends on it, what we can't, we can't work together and come together and solve problems and, and work out our differences. So what do you put more money, what do you put more emphasis on? Money or your soul? <laughs> Somebody said on one on, on one of our on one meeting one time again this for the public, but they said, oh well, well, we don't trust ourselves with the money. We don't trust our organization with the money. But when a new book comes out, we we trust that. We trust that the words in the book have been you understand? Put together properly, you understand, and and conveyed from the mind of the the master teacher into the hands of the people. So you don't trust them with the money, but you trust them with the books that are being put out in terms of um, the food for your soul. Can you see the dichotomy? Can you see the the crazy way that we could be looked at if you're looking at beings that were looking at us externally? Where well, they don't trust with the money, but they trust with their soul. So which is it that we put more emphasis in? If you were to ask that direct question to most people on this session today, they're gonna to out and outright say, yeah, so. But do our actions say otherwise? I'm not saying money's bad, <laughs> but it's a problem and you don't have it. <laughs> so better to get it and then it's not a problem or better to have it amongst everybody to have it uh, and then it's not a problem. You understand? To get to the point where, because I suppose really rich people are not doing the same things that uh, poor people are doing. You understand? The money comes more irrelevant and it's more about, um, you know, purpose in that regard. Um, and then I suppose, then what do you do with the money? You understand? How much what purpose? How do you want to affect the environment? Or are we going back to that reptilian mentality of hoarding? You understand the hoard? You see that in the reptilian brain, the R complex, hoarding, hold me, myself, I. Not about the whole, not about solving the problems um, that we're supposed to be doing as much battle for the world that we find ourselves in today. Okay, right. Uh, let me see. I think. Okay, I think we've got quite a bit to to still get through. Interesting enough. Um, okay, uh, so I think what we're going to do, we're going to stop there because this is a, a new subject that we're going to delve into. Um, and there are some important things we still need to sort of just cover off. Uh, uh, boom. Okay, so, um, so the next class is not the hardest actually but the next class is going to be in three weeks time um, just for this month only so it's going to be on the 11th of April uh, and then a week after the other class excuse me that's what happens when you're talking straight for four hours yeah your voice goes but anyway so 11th of April and then a week after as opposed to two weeks time it'll be the straight week after the uh, 18th of april um i can't remember off the top of my head what's on the, the schedule um in fact no sorry it is the nine nine but what we're going to do is obviously we'll finish off this one and then go into the nine a bit like i've done today so we'll finish off this particular class and things we want to uh convey um uh that need to be uh taught just uh that's one i think we want to get into um, about the nine gates uh, which is Arbor lag so the nine gates that one has to tras uh, traverse um, in order to make it to the next realm so we need to talk a little bit about that and then some of the symbolism so the signs of how our chants and prayers are working is the fact that we've given certain secrets as conveyed in the symbols uh, known as the faf or um, hieroglyphs as a a little bit of that science as it pertains particularly to the deity Nupu and around the opening of ceremony 
um, and why he's called the messenger of heaven and hell. Okay, that's what he's called, called messenger of heaven and hell. I think they refer to it as the Amduat. The messenger of heaven and hell, why is he called that? So some things that we just want to touch upon, just finish off uh, for, our, for our next session, and then we'll get into the book I refer to as the nine in both of these sessions on the 11th. Um, and the uh, 18th. Yeah, so just remember that it's the 11th, that's three weeks uh, from now um, for that month, and then be back to the same um, cycle again. So if you're registered, um, you should get a notification of that um, in a normal way. Yeah, so tell your friends, uh, tell family members, etc., um, about the classes. Um, this uh, and the previous session, not up yet actually. Um, but we'll be up should be up this week uh, on our YouTube channel um, so uh, look out for those um, any burning questions before we close um, there is somebody with uh, their hand raised um, Sakamtat um, okay, yeah, has go a hand raised mm-hmm. um, I'll just uh, Sakamtat your hand is raised so I'm going to allow you to speak make sure if you're going to ask a question make sure your microphone is unmuted uh, right in fact, um, yeah, my quest- I got about two questions three questions maybe um, okay go ahead go ahead the first one is um when we're doing the praying and the chanting, do we have to say all the prayers all at once? Or can we um, pick two or three prayers to do? Or should we do it from affirmation, I think it's affirmation all the way down to the 99 deity names? Uh, yeah, a good question. Yeah, so in that in that system, uh, you would do them all at once. Yeah, it would take you oh, 20 minutes, half an hour. Okay, so you should do that all at once. And um, um, the three the three names you said was called for the fall of the Adamites. Yes. Do you know the interpretation of those names? What what it means? Um, I'll leave you to do that homework. So basically, oh. Revelation nine eleven. Yeah. 11. Revelation nine eleven. You look up those uh, terms: uh, Apollyon, Abaddon, yeah, and mm-hmm. Abu Dean. Is then uh, uh, referred to dimensional shift part of Iraq as well. That makes sense. Yeah. And um, with all that we're doing with our the culture, um, can we, do we affect our clones in a positive way if we are practicing the culture? Uh, <laughs> interesting question. Uh, I mean, I suppose, as you know, you're not the clone is another thing. You might be the clone. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. And we've got seven clones out there. So I'm thinking, yeah, say I'm one. Is, am I affecting them because I'm on this path? Or are they affecting me? Or will all of us um, be are all of us on the same path because I'm doing what I'm doing? Well, I, I suppose as individuals, it maybe it's multiple personalities in that regard, just sharing the same oversoul. So I suppose you you can affect each. I suppose you can affect each other, um, but obviously, I suppose in the final decision of things, only one combination of that is needed. So to some degree, I suppose there is a race to. Who, who's the who's the person going to make it? I suppose in that regard, you understand? I mean, oh. it's not necessarily something that you can track in that way. So, I mean, there are things that happen. Sometimes a person might feel certain pains in their body, or you understand know, certain things that might happen where, as a result of activities, um, not only just from clones, but you have a obviously another counterpart, isn't it? In the the it, yeah. opposite world to this one I think it's referred mm-hmm. to as Clarion um, that's mentioned so when that when that being's awake on their side you are sleeping and, and vice versa so some of the times you can obviously affect each other but those that, in terms of those beings they need to be merged the purpose of clones remember at a certain point was that when um, certain extraterrestrials or elders in this particular case were being sent into the world they had to guarantee completion of their mission you understand so it was necessary then to um, 
put clones to ensure that um, if for some reason, I don't know, they got killed or, you know, picked up some illness or whatever that they couldn't um, cure, that you had either body parts or a big or vessel to transfer your consciousness into in order to complete your mission in fact in the next class we talk about uh, one of the ways in which that's done through something called the opening the mouth ceremony so um, yeah so that so not everybody has seven clones up to seven but that was part obviously of um, uh, Anunnaki project where um, they use cloning as I say for, for that reason and so obviously in Manfred Bank Risk you do see um, well, clones uh, duplicates, dubs so different types um, that you can see out here um, so yes you can affect yourself because you share the same you share the same oversoul so I suppose on an etheric level you're connected um, in that way is it something that you know uh, you can do much about um yeah, I'm not sure at this stage. That's that's probably one for the master. Um, but obviously, you know, like with anything else, there's various different voices in your head that you have to make decisions about and control. And now you're aware of it, then you know you should be making decisions based on what you want to do, not necessarily what um, you know, you're hearing. If, if it's not, uh, if it's leading to uh, adversity. Yeah, and one more thing: can we? Can we clean ourselves inside out, practicing the culture? And so, uh, so does it matter about interacting, your interactions um, in the past, um, affecting your DNA? Because we can always change it back for the better, isn't it? If you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, well, the, the thing is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good question. I think the, the point is, is that, Remember, your let's say twenty four percent of our DNA is in a constant transient state, isn't it? So it's affected by your environment. So the reality of the situation is, you have to get control of environment mm -hmm. as well as the stuff that a person's doing with their body, as well as managing the inner being. So yeah, all of these things have to be at a certain point for optimum um, growth. Uh, for one to fulfill their potential you have to control all of them this is why they, the master teacher built a Tamaray you understand or a, you understand mm -hmm. uh, upstate mm -hmm. New York where they had the land there or you know what I mean Bushwick Avenue prior to that because of the importance of that you understand so at some point we have to get back to that yes obviously we're in our various different city environments etc but it's hard to optimize you understand particularly in these city environments frequencies so on and so forth and there are certain things that one needs to do I suppose physically in terms of practice and alignment that are going to help you can only do the best that you can do in the situation that you find yourself in but ultimately we still have to put those things in place now whether they're achieved within our lifetime you understand this is where sometimes in terms of that divine love or that uh, selflessness we have to think okay cool we might not be able to achieve that we, well we look to achieve it in our lifetime but if we didn't would would we have done the necessary things in place for the children to take it on and send to the next level or putting things in place now so the children can can take it on board you understand so you always have to think yes I'm, I'm thinking about me myself and what I can do and how I can elevate but you also got to think forward and think children legacy and now as, as much back to those who are awake we've got to think when we think about legacy we've got to think okay what am I going to leave to you know to, to aid that particular journey do you understand about is my life insurance can I portion off once my children are taken care of certain people taken care of well, can I leave it in certain structures to you know what I mean that might fund a, a building project that might help you understand um, us to achieve our aims or so on and so forth so these things now you have to think forward you have to think bigger picture you understand too much me myself and I thinking you understand and not ambitious enough um, for the problems that we're facing um, yeah that's what we think so we have to think big these these things that we're talking about here in terms of mental abilities coming together so on and so forth they're only restricted as well to some degree by a lack of ambition and lack of confidence 
um, in ourself and putting certain things continually into into to practice. If all that we're reading about is true, you understand, and these types of things, well, the next bit about it is to put it into practice to see if it works. So, yes, you can do a certain amount at home by yourself, and obviously it's best to, but ultimately, you know, the type of environments, you know, if we, if we, I think if we'd known, we probably would have fought harder for the tunnel rate. We would have been out there. You know what I mean? Mm. Laying the streets and, you know what I mean? They have to got run bulldozers over us before they, you know what I mean? They run over because of what it represented. Um, because of what it represented um, and what was there. You understand? There are certain things that you're speaking about now, for example, <coughs> that, it wasn't just a case of you being in the ball, you could go and walk the labyrinth and, and practice. There were many different esoteric exercises that were designed to help you master your abilities, as well as it being a place for families to bring their children and, and hang out, you know what I mean? Be, you know, beautiful surroundings and settings, all things which, as I say, um, relate or help with that ascension um, journey, do you understand? So effectively, you're in the day and time now, where part and are punching a hole so basically we, we could if we were if we were on a lifeboat a life raft of you know different um, people of different types different makeup and so on and so forth you know what I mean and we were on this particular life boat or raft we might concern ourselves with various different differences between us but as soon as someone punches a hole in the boat we would forget those differences and our focus is on how do we plug up this you understand plug up the, yeah. the hole in the boat so we're at that, that point now where that hole's been put in the boat to cause us obviously to to focus on our coming together and obviously how we achieve that and how we obviously grow and come together as a community and nation for our own survival ultimately mm. Uh, thank you, Tarata. Uh, Antat of the Afwa, you are very welcome. Okay, um, so anything else? Any other questions? Uh, I see no further questions. Uh, there's no further questions from my end. Either. Okay, uh, thank you for that then. So the 11th is the next session. Um, obviously, if you've got questions beforehand, then you can email them. Um, to all eyes on Egypt, mn at aol.com. It's the uh, email address for queries uh, on the Zoom uh, platform. Uh, so 